It's been a long road since the original kicker christened that first pickup truck. It kicked off a car audio renaissance, and upgrading your music in a vehicle was a requirement. America's Music Machines became live and loud over your passion, your emotion, your existence. Outdoors or on the open road, your sound is kicker. guys, Chris Pendragon here coming to you from our race shop in Brownsburg, Indiana. I want to say thank you for checking out the Kicker Unmasked show. From speakers to their headphones, I've always been a huge fan of Kicker Audio because they like to live loud just like our Nitro Funny Car. I'm very proud to be part of the family. It's the Kip and Dave Show. Hmm, no excitement. Are you ready? <laughs> 22. Me, me, me. We're doing it one more time. We're going to do another one. We're going to do this right this yeah. time. Weeka, weeka, weeka. Yeah. Check. I'm smeatless. Smeatless. Back. Camera adds 27 pounds. Okay. It just seems like a, a, a I know, rough it's, tra it's, it's just it's kind of, yeah. This is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. out. This is Kip. And Dave. And I got it wrong again. And we're going to have to do this again because we, we both got a got different got trail. <laughs> Until then, this is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. C -c Come check us out. Yeah. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can. I think that's good. <laughs> just pick one. God, I hate the ending. There's no way to yeah. end this. Just say, come see us. Come. Just come see us. And just come see us. So. Come see us at the extra, come see us at the two locations. God, I, it just seems so hard. Oh, <laughs> howdy. Delmar Hogwall up here, coming to you from outside Mildred's Bait Shop in Lingerie. I want to appreciate you all coming, giving a look-see in on the Kicker Unmasked show. Those folks at Kicker salt to the earth make some of the finest gear ever tickle your ear. So, mighty fine of you to come take some time off and check them out. And remember, whether you're looking for night crawlers or nighties, Mildred's is your place. So once again, thank hey, what? Hey, son, put down that armadillo and get some pants on. Oh, my Lord, kids. Music is my passion, my livelihood, and it's in my DNA. My pals at Kicker Marine Audio gave me a chance to take the music what I love and listen to at home, on stage, and in the car, onto the water. Hi, this is Jason Bonham, and I want to say a big thank you to my friends at Kicker Audio for inspiring the songs and the stories behind the music that inspires America. Go overboard! This is your time. 
The Kicker Quad Box is the most insane, ground-pounding, basshead-loving, preloaded subwoofer enclosure we have ever offered. It consists of four L7R 12-inch subwoofers. It has a total power handling of 2400 watts RMS, and it's tuned at an amazing 31 hertz. Here to tell us more about it is Kicker's very own Jeremy Brown. Hi, my name is Jeremy Brown. I've been with Kicker for 22 years. I work in the research and development department. In the early 2000s, I would run the Gates Bronco at shows like Daytona. We would do hair tricks, 48 10-inch subwoofers with 48 1,000 watt amplifiers. Really big build back in that day. We were able to develop some high output enclosures that were up above the 170 dB mark. We set a few world records with some of those enclosure designs and our woofers. We learned a lot about high output enclosure designs during that time and we've been able to bring that to our product lines today. Within the last year, we introduced a new subwoofer enclosure with four L7R12s that we call the Quad Box. Our Quad Box is built out of three quarter inch birch. It's got a one and a half inch baffle and a one and a half inch bottom. We also use window frame bracing along with corner bracing to make the enclosure more rigid. We use a flared port to reduce port noise and increase port surface area. This type of vent design helps maximize output. We use the L7R 12 inch subwoofers because this allows you to use one KXA 2400.1 amplifier and you still get big bass with fewer upgrades to your charging system. The Kicker Quad Box is the bass head starter kit. And if you're worried, it plays way below 40 hertz. Do not attempt to adjust this transmission. We have assumed control. The year is 1980. Music fights for its very survival in an acoustically desolate wasteland man calls automobile. Enter Steve Irby, a man whose love of music helped end this scourge forever and forge a path for modern car audio to follow. A humble musician with a passion for quality sound, Mr. Irby is a man who feels it is his destiny to provide a sanctuary for mobile audio. Welcome. Join us this evening as we venture back to the very night a young Steve Irby gains his inspiration to create the legacy we know today as Kicker Performance Audio. Though he does not realize it now, by this time tomorrow, Mr. Irby will have completed blueprints for the original kicker and championed the war against mobile audio inequality. Tonight, Mr. Irby's prayers will be answered as he begins his quest into the Q Zone. Kicker L7QB8. With roots dating back to Kicker's inception, Mr. Irby and his team of engineers have achieved an unrivaled level of design and functionality. With extraordinary base and a minimal footprint, the L7QB8 utilizes a seamless quarter inch extruded aluminum housing, allowing optimal internal air volume for the subwoofer. This exclusive design provides exceptional strength and stability. Like the original kicker, the L7 QB8 incorporates a unique passive radiator to minimize required airspace while optimizing the efficiency and frequency response of the subwoofer. Opposite the passive radiator, the L7 QB8 is equipped with the all-new 8-inch L7 square subwoofer 
The 2016 L7 features an aluminum basket for exceptional strength and thinned aluminum heat sinks for efficient heat dissipation. Kicker's blue lace spider, solo cone 360 degree back bracing, and a laser etched cone brace combine as a single ultra rigid unit. The result is increased clarity, higher volume, and added reliability. The square cone features over 20% more surface area than round subwoofers. It's attached to a Santa Prene surround, then stitched to the cone for long life and durability. This surround features Kicker's patented rib corners, which fully dictates cone motion and extends surround life. At the base of the unit, a pair of custom form flanges integrate seamlessly with an extremely low profile mounting system, consisting simply of a mounting plate and ball. Once installed, the overall height of the enclosure is only nine and a half inches. This profile is small enough to work perfectly in countless trucks, sedans, and SUVs. Once again, Kicker sets a new standard with the groundbreaking design and unparalleled performance of the all new L7 QB8.
morning, everyone. This is Kip. It's Tuesday night, 7.30 Central Time. You are tuned in to Kicker Unmasked Live. It's our weekly production where we talk about everything and anything that has to do with Kicker. We bring on special guests, and sometimes you just don't know what we're going to do. We had John Myers on. He had a great conversation with us about box designs. This week, we're going to talk about the full line of Kicker mids and highs. I got a lot of paperwork here in front of me to keep me on track because there's a lot to go over. So we'll talk about the different sizes available, what really sets the differences between each one, and last but not least, of course, pricing, because we know that interests you as well. So with that said, welcome to the show. How's everyone doing this evening? Have a good dinner tonight? Oh, yeah. You know, guys, we're in a habit here since we stay, uh, basically we come in and work a full day, and then we just stay afterwards and put this show together. So uh, the company's nice enough to actually feed us. So tonight we had five guys' burgers. It was quite delicious. So I'm glad we got that out and under the way. Of course, I love eating anyway. Uh, you guys out there met me on other shows, you know that as well. Robert Van Hoy, I see you in the feed tonight. What's up, brother? Good to see you here tonight. Jay Reed, you're looking good. Justin Harrington. Sean, high five Vega, yo yo, what's poppin'? High five Vega's in the house. Thanks for joining us here this evening. Good to have you on board. Uh, of course, I've tuned into a lot of your shows that have been going on this week, seeing some things going on in the background. You had a great show the other night with the DIY and Toys Audio guy. Uh, that was a fantastic show. You got some great things going on over in your channel there, uh, Mr. High Five Vega, and thank you for joining us here this evening. Just kind of seeing what we got going in the thread here. Uh, hey, the Seth, I kicker, I just picked up a set of 47 KSC. Uh, 2704s, can't, bring that up there. Kicker, can't wait to get warmer weather and get them installed in the three-way setup with my KS six and a half inch components. You know, there's a lot of people who are doing that exact same thing, the Seth. I, I guess you're Seth, but we'll call you the Seth and that's your handle on there. Uh, that's a fantastic speaker that we've got going on there. We're gonna get a little more in depth on that here in a little bit when we get to that, but it's a smooth sounding driver. It'll play out almost to 20K by itself. You put that into a good three-way setup, get you a nice separate tweeter, set your crossovers up, and you're gonna have a very smooth system with more detailed mid-range where you wanna get it put up there. I'm just kind of looking through the feed a little bit here tonight, please. Uh, see what we got going on. If you got anything there, throw it up on the screen. Got David from Atlanta, Georgia chiming in. Any of your, two, any of your six benigns fit in 2016 Ram 2500. Jay, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get into each line, but to answer your question, the answer is yes. And as a whole, other than when we get into, well, that's a tricky question, including QS, but as you know, as speakers don't fit, they don't do you a darn lick of good. Uh, you can have a great sounding speaker, can have a great tweeter, can have a great internal, external crossover. You can have all that, but if it doesn't fit into your vehicle, it's worthless. If you can't fit it, you can't use it. And I will say that a few years back, we made a conscious effort as a company to make sure that our speakers would fit just about anything out there that's rolling down the highway on four wheels or six wheels or 18 wheels or whatever you might happen to have. And depth, not only from the back when you're going from the uh, mounting flange to the magnet, but we're also looking at from the mounting flange forward or what we call tweeter protrusion. Because in a lot of cars today, you also have to deal with the fact that if the tweeter sticks out too far, you're gonna hit or knock into that grill, the factory grill that's covering your door. So we look at both of those and we make sure that our speakers fit in as many situations as possible. And to put that in perspective, we actually have access to data databases that show those kind of dimensions. And all of our speakers for the most part, now I, I don't want to say components because components can get a little trickier, um, especially when you get to QS, but we'll touch on that when we get there. But even the components fit most, but on the coax line, we're looking at 85 plus percent, some of them are even uh, a little over 90% of the vehicles that are on the road, these speakers will fit in there. Meaning you don't have to worry about putting the speaker in, the magnet hitting the window going up and down, or any of your crank mechanism or power window mechanism, and you don't have to worry about the tweeter sticking out so far that you can't get your door panel back on. So when it comes to mid and high speakers, understanding our priority as a company, it has to fit, that's number one. And after we figure out what dimensions we have to deal with, both for the mounting depth into the door and the protrusion out from the tweeter, we make sure our engineers get to work on that and make a driver that will actually fit into the application, i.e. your car. Uh, RL, looks like RL Butler, hi, where can I get the quad box? 
visit a local kicker dealer. Uh, I do know that we uh, just recently shipped out the last ones that we had in stock right now. Uh, obviously, we make them. They come in. Dealers order them, and they go out. We had a couple in the barn. I know they have left the building. Uh, check your local kicker dealer. If you happen to be around Fort Wayne, Indiana, I'd call DNB Sales. Those guys are proud of how many they got. I'm sure they can hook you up with one. Uh, but people love that box. It's going very well for us. There are more coming. We're, it's not a special thing like it's one and done. It's a continual production item on that. And we've sold a lot more of the quad boxes than we thought we would, and there is more coming. So if you don't see it on the Kicker website, don't panic. Check a local Kicker dealer. And you can obviously look on the Kicker website and put in your zip code, and you can find the dealer or dealers who are closest to you. I just got two thumbs up, meaning they're ready. So I guess the cookies I've baking are ready to take out of the oven. It's actually for something else, but you know what I mean. J.J. Hamilton Owens, you know a guy named Ernie? Yeah, I know a guy named Ernie. He loves sitting back there behind the plexiglass and putting the heat on me. He's got a blowtorch back there. He just pulls it out and tries to light my fire every chance he gets, under my feet or other places that he thinks it's fun to make fun of. So yeah, Ernie, I know him. Actually, Ernie's a great guy. He's the lead guy here in charge of our video production, video graphics, all those things, those great commercials you saw at the beginning of the show. Ernie and his team put all those together, and hopefully tonight, uh, besides the Kip and Dave bloopers, which, you know, that never gets tired of seeing me stumble across things trying to get it right, but we had Jason Bonham join us, and that's a new commercial that we've got that actually promotes our marine products out there. Great new commercial. This was the first chance we could run it outside of the environment it was made for, so we've added that to the repertoire. Hopefully you've seen it. If not, check it out on a future show. We're always throwing that kicker town content in there so you can see what we're up to. Jason Dayett watched a Scott Martin video the other day where he was on his big boat. He has a ton of kicker speakers on that thing. You're right, Jason, he does. He's actually one of the guys we work with pretty closely. Uh, he loves our product, so we love working with him. And of course, you know, when he's out there fishing, uh, he likes to have it loud. He's going from point A to point B. And something that I didn't know, which was kind of interesting, I actually had a chance to go out and do some uh, deep sea fishing down in the uh, Key West area, both on the Gulf side and on the... Uh, Atlantic side and some fish actually get attracted to the boat from the base vibration so you know a lot of people say you know loud sound or bases are good for fishing but I was actually shown the opposite and the guys I was out with they knew the species of fish that were actually attracted to that vibration that sound so even out on the water fishing sometimes they play that system just to draw fish it was kind of cool so I'm just kind of looking through the feed here see if there's anything else to kick off the show with got uh, there's somebody who's chillaxin Thomas Marshall's chillaxin we're chillaxing with you, bro. Thanks for joining us and tuning in. Uh, you know, we're chillaxing as well. So that's kind of a cool word to put up there. Bobby, great show last night on Base Wars. Hey, Bobby, thanks for that shout out. You know, that was kind of a last minute thing. Uh, Jimmy and uh, Billy reached out to me and wanted to know if we could get on the Base Wars uh, channel with them last night. They wanted to talk a little bit about product, uh, shows, events, things that we're doing. Uh, great show. Uh, if you're into that thing, if you're into following or watching Base Wars, be sure you go check that out. It was a nice time with uh, Jimmy and Billy. And and, uh, they're looking forward. They say, we want to get you back on again soon. I said, hey, whenever you're ready, uh, just let me know. And we'll do it. So we did it right here from the studio. It's great doing it here from the studio because it's already set up to do great production. So I didn't even do it from home. I just stayed at work and did that last night with them. So thanks for hanging in, Bobby. Thanks for joining us last night. This Corona's for you, Kip. Mike Craner, you are my hero. How's that go? Can I get it right? There we go. I think that looks right. You know, Mike's kind of my buddy in crime. Uh, he and I have shared a lot of personal stuff. I know what he's going through, and he knows what I'm going through when it comes to the health stuff that can sometimes be a little sketchy. So, Mike, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I can't have a corona right now, but, brother, I got a couple cold ones at home. As soon as I get done with this, I'll be joining you. So hang in there, man. Take care. So with that said... You know, we said this show is kind of going to be about the Kicker line of Mids and Heiser Coax product. And, you know, Kicker's known for base. We've been known for base ever since we started this company with the original Kicker product that gave you lots of great performance that came through the backseat of a truck. But if you're building a well-rounded and full-bodied audio system for your vehicle, whatever it is, and I say car, but it could be anything, car, truck, van, SUV, uh, ATV, UTV, boat, you name it. Tonight, we're going to really focus on the products that are targeted at vehicles that have tops and windows and sides and doors, not really boats. Uh, we're going to cover some more of that in a future show because there's a lot of things in the marina's focus. But it doesn't mean you couldn't use these products in some of those applications. But really, we're talking about cars on here. And it's, it's great. Base is fun. It's great to have that impact and that energy. But it's not a full system if you can't, as a lot of people say, hear the words. And that's where you need to look at your car and decide where you're going to put and integrate some great sounding speakers to go along with that. 
Now, a lot of you out there, you may have just a completely stock system and you're happy with it and you're just looking for a little bit of an upgrade. Or maybe your stock system's finally let go and you got a speaker that's bad. Joe Hurst, love all my Q-Series mids and high. Joe, I agree with you, the Q-Series is fantastic. We're gonna to touch on those a little bit more uh, further on in the show, save the best for last, so to speak. But yeah, I agree with you, the Qs are amazing. Uh, I personally have a, a 2012 Ford Escape and my front driver's door speaker has finally let go. It's actually been gone for a while and it's <laughs> kind of doing that. You know the sound I'm talking about. And I really, really, really want to put in, and even though it's set up for six by eights, I'm gonna eventually get those door panels off, maybe get John Myers here to give me a hand, we'll do a little finagling, but I wanna get a set of the Q coaxles, the six by nine coaxle under that door. I absolutely love the way those coaxle components sound, that six and a half and that six by nine, or excuse me, six and three quarter actually. Uh, they are fantastic sounding drivers. Thanks for that shout out on that. I'm looking for a three piece, he says three price, but I'm sure you meant three piece there, JR. I'm looking for a three piece component set to ohm. Everything we do in speakers is all a four ohm nominal impedance. Uh, that has kind of become the industry standard uh, as far as impedance for car products. So everything we do is going to be at four ohms. Now, I, two ohms or one ohm or three ohms, you know, some factory speakers can be slightly lower impedance. They can be in that two to three ohm range. But there's, it's been kind of a standard forever that when you work in the car audio, it's just amplifiers were designed for four ohm loads. And then as they went along, they became uh, two ohm stable. So four ohm and two ohm are kind of the way they go. We tend to stay with four ohm drivers because they work well with just about any factory audio. If you're gonna put it in there, they work well with just about any factory amplifier and they work well with any aftermarket amplifier. And the benefit to using a four ohm and staying with that is you can run two pair in parallel on just about any car audio amplifier today that's designed to run into two ohm. So we don't really do a two ohm component set. Everything we do is four ohm and that's why it's kind of the standard. And as far as a three piece, uh, we really don't do a three piece kit at this time that you just buy the kit and it's a three piece system. Uh, with the snowman coming, the KSMT, which will be in the KS line, that's gonna be the three quarter inch tweeter and the two and a half inch mid range. Matter of fact, it's this little guy right here is the KSMT. This is a two way setup that's designed to add to whatever mid base or mid range driver you've got down the door. So you could add this to factory and turn it into a three way system. You could add it to any kicker mid range or any other mid range and turn it into a three way. And then we also have the new two and three quarter inch KS mid range and you could add that mid-range to any kicker component set wired in there and you would have a dedicated system where you've got mid-base, mid-range, and tweeter. And if you're going to do that, of course, you'll need to either use the passive uh, crossover. It's a 6 dB high-pass cap that comes with the two and three-quarter. Or if you're really looking at a three-way, three-piece system, I bet you're dedicated to something that's a little more high-end and you're probably using either an amplifier with DSP capability or you have an outboard DSP and you're probably going to do everything electronic anyway. Um, no matter how good you make them, the passive of crossovers job is to take a two channel amplifier and split that signal into the many rainbows of frequencies you need to run, whether it's a tweeter and a mid-range or a tweeter and a mid-range and a woofer, however that is. But when you go fully active and remove that passive crossover, it opens up to a whole new world of, of adjustability and sound quality and things you're going with. And most people talking three-way, they're doing full active. So you can easily do that as well. The Q coaxles are the best sounding coaxles I've ever heard. Well, Mr. David Gamini, I agree with you on that statement. I think the Q coaxles are also some of the best sounding coaxles I've ever heard. Uh, I remember the first time I heard the six by nines in some test cabinets at CES, I was literally floored at the uh, tonal sound quality, the evenness, the smoothness uh, coming out of that six by nine driver. I did fall in love with those speakers the first time I saw them and then obviously heard them. Uh, uh, they're sweet on the ears and they sound fantastic. So, oh, here's another one. Anthony, Anthony Aho. What is one of the decisions when Kicker makes coaxial speakers? Well, we kind of touched on the first one. The first decision, it has to fit. We kind of talked about that in the first part of the show and whether we're talking about DS, which is uh, the first step in the kicker coax line, CS, which takes you up the line into the higher end coax above that, and components, whether you go into KS, which gets you into more refined sound, more refined materials, uh, different crossovers, or you step all the way out to QS, they have to fit. That is the number one thing that you have to have as fitment, and that's the first decision we make on any speakers. Now, I did say the caveat was components, and leave that one up from John up there, I'm gonna get to that in just a second. They do have to fit. The one place where that probably is a little 
I'll say iffy and really relies on the installer, whether it's you or the person you have putting the speakers in, is when you get into the Q-Class components, that is a beefy cast basket system. It's a much bigger magnet on there. Uh, we have one here. When we get to that, I'll actually pull it off the, the, the table and spin it around so Tim can get a close-up on that. But they're a bigger speaker. So as far as, you know, the fitment into doors, the clearances, everything you need so it works, it'll, it's probably going to work in most cars, but it's the bigger of the drivers that we have here would be the q components or separates and those you're going to have to make sure and work and make sure that you've got the depth that you need to go in there. You may have to do a baffle panel that it gets a little thickness to pull the magnet away from the window glass or the mechanisms that move the window glass and you may not. It just depends on your vehicle but as far as that 85 to 90 percent fitment rule the Q class components or separates are going to be on the lower side of that probably more than like that 75 to 80 percent because they are a little bit deeper and bigger magnet on there. But people going for that type of driver they're all about getting the most performance they can and they're willing to do what they need to make those drivers fit. So that would be a little bit different. Now the Coax QS, they're going to fit just about anything and you'll see why when we get to them because they actually use a Neo magnet structure, not just on the tweeter, but even on the mid-range and that gets that really small and compact and they'll fit in just about anything and everywhere. So we'll get to that a little bit more when we get to QS. Novice to car audio here, what's the best way to pair the right speakers with the right amp? And this is from Michael, I think Klingler, it's either Kingler or Klingler. Michael, when it comes to pairing your amps to your speakers, there's really two numbers you're going to see on any speaker, and we'll talk about those in the, all the speaker lines we'll get to, and that's wattage as far as it being an RMS measurement, and then there's this thing called wattage that's a peak measurement. Now, all of our CS speakers, all of our KS speakers, all of, all, all of them, we do a continuous RMS power rating, but when you look at DS and you look at CS, we also put on there what's called a peak power rating. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, peak power ratings, they might make you feel good when you look at that max number on that box and you might feel like you're getting a lot of value for your money because it's got this big number on there, but I'm just being real honest with you. Peak power ratings, you should just avoid. Even though they're even on our CS and DS products, I'm just telling you, they don't really tell you the whole story of the driver. What you want to look at is the RMS rating. So for example, if you're looking at a speaker and it says it's 50 watts RMS and it might say 150 or 160 or 180, depending on what the peak rating might be, look at that RMS number and that's the number you want to target for an amplifier. So if it says 50 watts RMS, I'd recommend you look at an amplifier that's 50 watts RMS. Now you can be a little smaller than that and of course you can be a little bit bigger than that. Uh, we usually typically say around here 20-25% is a nice window to be in so if you've got a 50 watt RMS speaker you could look at a 65 watt amp, a 70 watt amp, a 75 watt amp because at the end of the day if you set the game properly you got your crossover set properly, so you're not trying to make your six and a half inch driver make base like it's a 15 inch woofer, so you got it high pass properly if you have a sub. If you got it all set properly and you're not running your amplifier into clipping, you're not going to have a problem with that speaker. Clipping is where people destroy speakers. Uh, when you run your amplifier, whether it's in your radio or it's an external amplifier, if you run into hard clipping, that is what causes speakers to heat up and heat is what destroys a speaker. Heat is what makes the adhesives on the uh, voice coil wire that's attached to the former. It makes it get soft and when that gets soft, it's when it's called a blown speaker. You guys have seen them, you've smelled them. Uh, that's what blows a speaker up. So when we have an RMS rating, that's what I want you to really focus on. The peak number, unfortunately, there's a lot of guys who are just getting into car audio and they buy by numbers and they think that big peak number tells them something. So in DS and CS, we promote those numbers and we put them on the package. But I'm just being real honest with you. Just look at the RMS power rating, match that up to whatever amplifier you're looking for and you'll be really good. And understand it doesn't be exact. So if we're looking at a 50 watt speaker, I'd say look at an amplifier that's, you know, 35 to 65, 75 watts. If you're in that range on a 50 watt RMS speaker, you're going to be good. Uh, I've got a lot of experience. I've, I have a lot of experience because I've blown up a lot of speakers over my years in car audio and I've learned from that that when a speaker blows up 99.9 .9 times out of 100, it's the user's fault. It's my fault. I didn't have it adjusted properly. I was clipping the amplifier too hard. I wasn't, didn't have a proper crossover point. There's a multitude of reasons. It's very rare that a speaker blows up, i.e. the voice coil overheats and goes bad and it's not user error. So look at that, set everything up properly, you'll be good to go and you will have lots of fun with that. Myself, 
I believe there's no such thing as too much power because if you're not running out of power, and as long as it's clean and it's not clipped, you'll run the speaker, you'll mechanically get the speaker to where it can't move any further and you'll hear mechanical noise at that point. Uh, then it's real obvious, don't play me any louder. So for myself, like if I'm running speakers that are 50 or 65 watts RMS, I'll put a 100 watt amplifier on there. I'll adjust it properly, I'll make sure I'm not clipping it and I'll be good and I know that I'm never clipping that amplifier and I'm always getting the maximum performance out of my speakers. But look at the RMS rating, that's the key on that. Do we have any other questions put up on the screen? Thank you, sir. Are you ever gonna make a powerful four channel amp? By the defined powerful, I'm assuming you mean more than 50 or 65 or 75 watts um, at four ohms. And like our amplifiers, like if you look at uh, any of our amplifiers on our CX line, like we currently do a 360.4, uh, that amplifier does 65 watts a channel times four into four ohms. It does 90 watts a channel at two ohms. That's a pretty powerful amplifier for that, but if you're looking for more power than that, we have had people ask us that question. Uh, we may be looking at making some bigger uh, full range amplifiers coming in the future. Uh, the reality is for, for most users, unless you're doing what I like to call extreme big systems that are you know huge bass, PA type speakers, things like that, where it's really more about entertaining the neighborhood than enjoying the sound in your car. 50 to 100 watts, that range is really a lot of power to put on a coax or a pair of components. It really truly is a lot of power. But yeah, people do ask for more power, and we're listening to you. I'll put you in the column that you'd like to see some bigger four channel or two channel amps, and we'll see what we can do. Um, something that I've done in the past is in our marine line, we make an 808. Uh, and it's 50 watts a channel at four ohms times eight, and it's 100 watts per channel times, uh, times eight when you drive it into a two ohm load. Well, the cool part about that amplifier, even though it's marine, and the only difference is it's you know black with the green light and the green stripe as opposed to having like the red on the KS or the yellow on the CX, but that 808, you can bridge, I know it sounds weird to say that, but you can bridge that eight channel down to a four channel, and if you bridge that down to a four channel and use that so left, uh, front, left, uh, right, uh, or front left, front right, rear left and rear right, so take a, you take a typical four channel in a car, that amp would give you 200 watts by four. That is a ton of power that you would be running on coaxes or components of your car. So if you're looking for a big four channel, take the eight channel and bridge it down to a four channel and you're getting 200 watts by four. So that would be a recommendation I give you if right now you're looking for something big, man, just grab that KX uh, MA Marine amplifier, that eight channel, bridge it down to four and you're good to go. That's 200 watts by four. That's a lot of power. Gary Reed, how do you know you're clipping? Gary, that is probably one of the most asked and answered slash unanswered questions that's out there. Uh, what clipping means is it doesn't matter how big your amplifier is. I don't care if it's five watts, 500 watts, 5,000 watts. In an amplifier, when you're, you're talking wattage, in, in one reality, you're really talking about how many volts can that amplifier swing from full positive to full negative. And if you look at how a speaker moves and what a sine wave looks like, I mean, it goes full positive, comes back, goes full negative, comes back. If you exceed those rails on an amplifier, so if you try to, to, if you tell the amplifier what you do with your volume knob or your gain setting, if you tell that amplifier to try to make more power than it can, you will clip. And what will happen is you can't take the waveform any higher than the positive rail and you can't take the waveform any more negative than the bottom of the negative rail. And the harder you clip, the longer and the more squared off that wave becomes. And that squaring off of that wave represents two things. It represents the maximum voltage the amplifier is capable of making is being dumped into your speaker, number one. And number two, as it's squaring off, the further it gets from being a nice rounded point to getting more square and then getting more square and getting more square, that flat line at the top, that represents time. So what happens literally, if you can think about it, if you're clipping hard, I mean, if you're clipping out here to where you're almost square waving, guys can do that, they'll get into high distortion. That means that speaker is being pushed out as far as it can go by that amplifier. And whatever that voltage is at the top, it's being dumped into that speaker for that time and the speaker's not moving. It's, it's held out there, powers run through that voice coil, and then it's sucked all the way back to the negative swing and the same thing's done again and now the power's pushed through. That's what clipping is. It's when you've taken an amplifier beyond its capabilities. And it has nothing to do with how much power the amplifier is. It has everything to do with simply exceeding the capabilities of the amp. Where, like I said, like it's five, 500, or 5,000 watts, doesn't matter. You can clip them all. So typically, an educated user will sit down. Uh, I've done it for a long time. I can usually use a one kilohertz test tone and I can hear when the gain on an amp is properly set up. You can hear when you're starting to get uh, harmonics when you start clipping the amplifier for setup. Uh, but ideally, even myself, I like to use a oscilloscope 
and some test tracks, and you throw those test tracks, whether it's a one kilohertz test track, or if you're doing subs, do a 40 uh, hertz tone. Uh, if you're doing just tweeters, you might do a little bit higher, depending on what you run to the amp. You, you don't want to play these signals into your speakers. You really want to disconnect your speakers when you're doing this, and you want to look at the output with an oscope. And you set the gain. First, you look at your radio and find out well, where does it clip, because even your radio clips. And I find out where it clips. Well, I don't want to turn my radio up any higher than 32. At 33, it starts clipping, so 32 is my max volume before my radio clips. And then what you do is you go to the next component in line, which is typically your amplifiers. Now, some people have crossovers or other processors, and if, if you have other things, you do the exact same process, but we're just going to go to your amp. So if I know my radio clips at 32, 32 is my max volume. Now I go to my amplifier, I look at its outputs, and I adjust the gain on the amplifier. And when the amplifier clips, I bring it back so it's not clipped. And what I've basically done is I've said, okay, when my radio is at maximum clean unclipped output, now my amplifier is at maximum clean uh, unclipped output power. Uh, Oscopes, there's some great tools from uh, Steve Mead Designs, SMD. He's worked with Tony, uh, DMORI Engineering. They have some devices that'll do that. Experience is your teacher. There are tools you can do it with. Uh, you, you'd have to either educate yourself or have someone teach you how to do it. Uh, there is in uh, kicker amplifiers, the KX, uh, we actually have clip indicators in those. Uh, when you're setting up a KX amplifier, you simply find out where clipping on your radio is. We always recommend three-quarter volume. If you're at three-quarter volume on just about any radio, you're clean. Uh, so go to three-quarter volume on your radio, bass and treble set flat. When you're doing a KX amplifier, you just go back and you look at the gain pot and start adjusting it. There's a red light. When the red light comes on, stop. Back it down a little bit. Red light turns off, you're good. Gain is set. Um, other than that, you really need some tools, a little bit of help, a little bit of education. It's not hard to do if you got the right tools, and the tools to do it with are fairly inexpensive today, but clipping is not your friend. Uh, if you get online and do some research and looking around, there are some DIY tools where you can use a small speaker or even a tweeter or a piezo, uh, and you can set it up so that you can actually kind of hear when the amplifier starts clipping. It won't damage the speaker. You can use that as a test tone. It's out there. If you just Google it, there's some DIY tools you can make. But at the end of the day, if you've never done it before, you're probably better off to ask someone who's done it. But clipping is the number one killer of speakers. And if you clip, you're gonna kill a speaker eventually. There's just no way around it. And the way, only way you can avoid clipping is there's a certain point on your volume knob, you gotta stop. And that point, there's no fixed line in the sand. It's gonna vary, depending on the music you're playing, depending on how hot that music is recorded. Full output on your radio with something from today may be recorded so hot that full output would be like 28. And if you go above that, you're clipping because that signal's so strong. Listen to some old rock from the 80s, you might find out you go all the way up to 32 or 33 and you're not clipping yet because it's a much softer recorded music. Uh, the reason we have volume knobs and the reason we have gain controls on amplifiers is volume is so you can adjust the volume, whatever you're listening to, and the gain control on the amplifier is not a volume knob. It is so that you can match that amplifier to any radio that you're hooking that up to. So if you have a radio that's got one volt of output before it clips or a radio that's got 10 volts of output before it clips, you want to adjust the gain on that amplifier to the radio. And that's why there is a gain knob. You know, in a perfect world, every radio would just put out one volt. We wouldn't even put gain controls on amplifiers. They would just be set at a fixed one volt input. You'd hook the radio to the amplifier and you would never set a gain control. Unfortunately, that's not reality. We have to be able to adjust the gain on amplifiers because you have to match the amplifier to whatever radio or system you're putting in so that it's voltage matched to your radio. And so that's why there is a gain control and there is a proper way to set it and it's important you set it right. So what we might do is we might get John Myers in the studio one night. We can get some tools up here. We can actually show you guys how to set the gain controls on an amplifier. We could even use a KX and show you that when the light on the KX shows you're clipping, on the Oscope, you're actually clipping. That might be a great thing to do. We'll plan that for a future show. That, you just gave me a great idea. We're going to do that. Any other great questions over there that you can bring up, guys? Steve Bar... Hey, Steve! Brother! How you doing this evening? Steve is our gentleman, Las Vegas, out there. He's working on a fantastic build. It's going to be a little bit over the top. He is the first guy that's going to get teal small parameters on the new speakers. <laughs> L7X. Do you think the Class D amps sound as good or almost as good as the old AB amplifiers? Well, I don't know what the experience level is of everyone here in the chat and what you know about speaker amplifiers. Classes of amplifiers simply refer to the topology and how an amplifier is designed. Um, Kicker didn't invent class D. Uh, Kicker didn't invent class A, class AB, class H, class T, class G. There's a whole bunch of these classes. Uh, it's actually the Society of Audio Engineers and it's a topology or how an amplifier can work. Class A is considered by a lot to be one of the best sounding, if not the best sounding amplifier topologies that are out there. But when you move to a Class A amplifier, one of the drawbacks is it's fairly inefficient, about 25%, and it makes a whole lot of heat. 
So Class A is not really used much at all in car audio at all. As a matter of fact, I think there might not even today be any Class A amplifiers available for car. There used to be some you could get. They were really big, like a 25 watt amplifier would be literally you know, three foot long. Uh, huge, because it's dissipating a lot of heat. So Class AB, it's the best of Class A, and then B is a little bit of biasing where we turn off the positive transistors that are run the positive half of the swing, we turn off the negative transistors, we bias them a little bit, so they run a little warmer, they give you great sound quality, and Class AB has kind of been the standard or the gold standard for years. Not just in car, but in home, and in pro sound, DJ, live music environments, you name it, Class AB forever was kind of the gold standard. And then a lot of technology came along, people were looking to get more power out of the package, they wanted to have less heat, and so this little thing called Class D, and Class D is not new, Class D was invented or actually back in 50, it was either 53 or 56, I uh, sometimes get those years wrong, it's either one of those two, but that's when they came up with Class D. Class D initially was used on the car side for just bass amplifiers, and the reason being, the way a Class D amplifier works is it modulates the signal. It's a pulse width modulated signal. They're not digital. They're confused and often called digital because the way it works kind of looks like it's digital, but it's really not. It's pulse width modulation. And when it gets done doing that, there's actually output filters on the output side that filter out noise that comes out of there. Uh, CD players all have output filters. Doesn't matter what CD player you've got on planet Earth, the way a CD works is very similar. It recreates a waveform out of a stepped signal of ones and zeros, and it has to smooth that back into an analog waveform. Class D amplifiers kind of do the same thing, except they have to smooth out the noise and hash that is above the frequency that you don't want to hear. So initially, the speed of the switching devices weren't fast enough to really do full range. It was really dedicated to just really 100 hertz and down. And then as the years went by, the pulse width modulated controllers got faster. The devices, the FETs themselves, were able to switch faster. And now we have devices that are fully capable of being used in a full range environment, and they work in Class D. We can switch them at a fast enough speed that we get up high enough, then we filter out all the noise that's there, and you get a great sounding signal. Now, it's a big debate. There's still people today, is Class AB better than Class D? Is Class D better than Class AB? And that debate is never going to go away. But here's what I'll say. Class D has gotten to the point that blindfolded, I think the average person with a amplifier playing, not clipped, just using it to amplify the music, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. Uh, I've done those blind ABX techs myself, and our Class D full range amplifiers, especially the Q class amplifiers and the uh, KX, KX amplifiers, man, they sound sweet, they sound awesome, they're a lot smaller than they ever were, they create less heat than they ever had, and it's because of that Class D technology. So uh, that's just looking at it from the car standpoint, but here's what really kind of seals the deal for me. When you look at any company out there that's making home audio AV receivers, and you start talking about, first it was just two, two channel stereo, and then we went to quadraphonic, and then it was five channels, and then now you step up in today's world, you're talking 5.1 with Dolby Atmos capabilities, so you might have two or four overhead speakers, and then you got two speakers in the rear, and two speakers on the side, and two speakers in the front, and your center channel. You're looking at people are needing 11 channels of amplification out of a home receiver. So what's happened? They've all moved over. They have names for it. Some of them call it ICE. There's other names. But a lot of the home industry has moved over to class D amplification because it lets them get those extra channels they need for Atmos, pack it into that same sized receiver, and still have it plug in and work off of the limited, because no matter what you do, it's a 20 amp max outlet that you're plugging into, and it's really rated for a maximum of about 1800 watts. So that's your reality as far as how much power can you realistically make out of a typical 20 volt outlet in your home. So they've moved to class D. Even whole house audio amplifiers, you've got like 12 channels and it's 50 watts a channel or even 100 watt channel, they've moved to class D. Your home is quieter than your car. If you're gonna hear weird noises, if you're gonna hear anomalies in the signal, you're gonna hear them a whole lot easier in your home than you are in your car. So the fact the home industry has transitioned to Class D for all the reasons, smaller, lighter, more power, more channels, less weight, I think not only is Class D here to stay, but you're only gonna see it getting better and better. Uh, the switching devices are just gonna get faster and faster. The capability of the output roll-off circuits are only gonna get better, whether it's from an engineering standpoint or a material standpoint. And the days of Class D doesn't sound good, yeah, there was a time for full range, Class D sounded horrible, but they're not today. Class D sounds fantastic when it's done properly. And one of the things that's really cool about it is Class D amplifiers are actually really good at not creating uh, third order or odd order harmonic distortion. 
which that is something that can sound really nasty. Uh, it's really like if you go back into the old days, tube amplifiers, people just love, say they just love the way tube amplifiers sound. Well, what's funny is tube amplifiers just create a whole bunch of even order or second order harmonic distortion. People think that is warm sounding. Um, so class D, uh, normal transistor amplifiers, they can produce third or, or odd order harmonic distortion. Uh, class D doesn't do that. So there can be some benefits to class D. It's all in the engineering and the parts you use. Uh, I've listened to what we do. I know what our engineers do. I get to walk in the lab and see. I'm sold on class D and I think it works. And for the everyone out there, it gets you amplifiers that are smaller, lighter and less heat and more power. So that's a great thing. John Kerry, can't Class D affect your instruments on your gauge cluster and make your engine light come on among other little annoyances in some cases? John, you are 100% correct. In cases, that can happen. And here's where it happens. In the design of the amplifier, if the engineers didn't take into account that they're having to deal with this hash, or what we call EMI, that's electromagnetic induced, or RFI, radio frequency induced noise, which all amplifiers make it. Class D amplifiers just happen to do it at a different frequency that can really interfere with AM and FM, particularly FM, it can squelch it. But if the engineers are doing their job, they have the power supply shielded or the amp itself shielded properly. If they're doing the proper filtering on the output side, if they're doing the proper filtering on the input or B plus side so that noise can't you know, go back and get into the 12 volt line and affect other components in your car, you won't have a problem. So obviously our goal is to not have a problem. Our engineers do a great job that day in day out. Are there amplifiers out there that are class D that cause those problems? Yep, there sure are. That's why you know those problems exist. So it really depends that the quality of your class D amplifier, uh, not only how good it sounds, but is it going to interfere with your car? Great question. And there's your answer. I hope that gives you the thing. Just make sure you're buying a good class, class D amplifier. You're not going to have those problems. So with that said, guys, what I want to kind of dive into is here at Kicker when it comes to mids and highs, and, and I'll try to answer other questions in your guys. So please stay tuned. I'll try to get to all of them as much as I can. Um, but when it comes to that, we basically do four lines of speakers here. We do what we call the DS, then we step up from DS, we go into what we call CS, and then when you move out of CS, we go into what we call KS, and then last but not least, when you move out of KS, you go into what we call QS. So that's the four lines of speakers in our lineup. Now, I hate to use the term good, better, best. When we design a speaker here at Kicker, we design an amplifier and we design a subwoofer, we don't care if you're buying our entry level speaker or if you're buying our most expensive speaker, we wanna give you the most performance that you can get out of that product at that price point. We engineer it to deliver the best performance we know how to do at that price point. Does a QS speaker, coax, sound better than a DS? The answer is yes, it does. Does that mean a DS speaker sounds bad? Absol absolutely not. You have to have the right power, you have to have the right installation, you have to have the right application to fully appreciate what a better speaker is going to do for you. And if you're just dealing with a factory radio, let's say that's what you've got. I've got a factory radio, I've had it for three years, it's great, it does everything I want it to do, and my front left speaker died and I just want to replace the speaker. I don't want to add a subwoofer, I'm not looking to change all the speakers in my car. I'm, no, I've got, if I got one up front bad, I'm going to replace both up front because I'm going to do it in a pair. But I just want to get my car back up and run, I want to have great sound and speakers, and I, and I want it to be as loud as it can, just like it came from the factory. Well, that would be DS for us. And the DS is a speaker that's designed to fit just about everything out there. It's, it's 85 to 90% of the speakers out there all fit that. You're going to get great sound out of those speakers. They follow the rules of the protrusion. We try to keep them thin on the magnet side. We try to keep them shallow and sweet. They stole my water. Did you guys see them? I don't, I mean, they're trying to be cool. They're cool cats. I mean, I'm standing here, I'm at the camera and I'm talking, I'm doing my thing. And I see Timmy, I see Ernie and Ernie's over there with Timmy and they're on mics. They're like, ba 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 And then I see Timmy, he walks around over here and it's like, and so now, now I'm like, Where's my water? They think they're cool, they think they're sly, but what's gonna happen here in about 15 minutes, I'm gonna have to give them a cue to bring my water back. That's what's gonna happen. But no, no, don't bring it to me now. Just leave it sit. Oh, he's taking it further away from me. I'm never gonna get my water. <laughs> he's drinking my water. You are cruel. <laughs> so <laughs> we're just a bunch of knuckleheads, guys. Just ignore us. So to, to make this easier for me, because guys, I, I memorize a lot of specs on speakers and stuff here at Kicker, but to make it easier on me, I actually brought some cheat sheets tonight where I pulled out some specs, some specific things I want to talk about. So I want to start at DS and I want to move up the line and show you that. So I got two sheets here. I got some facts and figures that I pulled together to actually go over with you here on camera. And I brought the 2021 
Profit pricing guide so I can actually talk price in here because I want to give you guys the full rundown on all the different speakers in the lineup and kind of what they run through. So with that said, I'm going to open up here. So I apologize that I'm going to look a little bit pay for tonight, but there's too much for me to memorize. So we're going to start at DS. And you asked about that. So DS really, if you're looking for a very efficient speaker, you want to be able to take the power that's available in a factory system and give you great sound and great output, I'm gonna recommend DS. Now, could you go to CS? Sure. Could you go to KS? Sure, you could. But if you move up into CS and KS, you really, to, to really fully understand and get the most out of those speakers, to appreciate them, you're gonna need more power. You're really gonna want more power. So. It's not about CS sounds a whole lot better than DS. It, it does, in a way. It'll handle more power. You can add an amp. You can get louder. But the DS speakers are designed to be very, very efficient and take the power available. Ernie, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. You're, you're on my radar, brother. Ernie's back there. I don't know if you can hear. He probably can't. He's laughing at me because he took my water. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get Ernie. <laughs> so with the DS line, and I'm going to go through my cheat sheet here. First thing is, perfect upgrade from stock, that's really where we start off with. We want these to be able to be a drop in, replace any factory speaker, and give you great sound out of that. Now, you know, we talked about impedance, and that was actually brought up one of the questions. A lot of car speakers, stock speakers, can be that two and a half, two to three and a half ohms impedance. When you look at the DS speakers, these have a nominal impedance of four ohms. The first thing to remember when it comes to impedance on a speaker is I don't care what it's rated, that's a nominal impedance. If you actually look at the, uh, the uh, impedance chart of a speaker, any speaker, I don't care whose speaker it is, mine, theirs, yours, ours, everybody's, as frequency varies, impedance varies. So it's not always a four ohm speaker. There are times that speaker may dip down to an ohm and a half. And then there's other times it may be up at six or eight ohms. The impedance varies with frequency. As that speaker moves in and out, as that voice coil is, is attracted and repelled against that magnetic field that's in there, the impedance rises and falls versus frequency. So four ohms is a nominal impedance. So when you look at any speaker, any speaker, sub, mid, tweet, doesn't matter. That rating is a nominal impedance, but understand that impedance is always doing this. So even though it's called four ohms, understand that speaker is going to do this in impedance as it's playing through its frequency and operating range, just like the factory speaker. So these are very efficient. They're going to give you great sound. They're going to take advantage of that factory power. They're going to fit. That's one of the key things on there. We got into discussion, and I'll pick out, I'll try to touch on the ones that actually stand out and are slightly different, but here at Stillwater Designs, we have been known for using uh, polymer blended cones forever. And the reason we use poly blended cones in just about everything is in the harsh automotive environment, you're dealing with sun, which is UV rays, and as you know, UV rays will eat up and destroy just about anything left out in it, and we're dealing with moisture. Now that moisture in a car door, or in a rear deck, in a car door, it can actually be rainwater that comes down and runs down your glass, it runs into your door, drips down in there and drips through the speaker. There's actually a plastic sheet in every car door that's made out there to keep that water from getting in and affecting anything, the electronics, your speaker wire getting into the car, but there's water that gets in there. In the car, if you just park your car overnight and it gets cold and you reach a dew point and you go out the next day and there's moisture on your glass and there's moisture on the windshield, that's condensation. All those speakers, they face condensation day in and day out based on that. So polymer blended cones last in the car environment. Uh, a lot of you out there, whether you're installers for a living or you're just a DIY guy who's done your own, if you've ever pulled out a speaker from the car, one of those factory speakers that gets about three years old and they've used a paper cone and a, a non-treated surround that's not made to hold up as well against UV, you pull it out, there's no surround and the cone itself looks like brown and it's brittle and it starts falling apart. So I'm not saying that paper is a bad material, but you got to do treatments and things to it to get paper to last. And we really feel that polymer blended work really well because it gives you great resistance to the heat, the UV, and the water that's out there. So that's what we put into those. Stamp steel frames, poly blend cones. They do have a ribbed UV treated polyester foam surround. So we do Oh, okay, thank you. I'll do that. Thanks, Tim. Get to that in just a second. So it is a UV-treated surround. Our surrounds will last a lot longer than the foam surrounds that are found on a lot of speakers out there that come stock because we do the best UV treatment that's available today. Three years from now, I mean, UV treatment's probably going to be better than today because we simply use the best chemicals that are available to get as much UV treatment on that surround as possible, so it's going to last and be durable in that car environment. They all use a half-inch, it's called a polyether imide, tweeter. So it's a half inch, 13 millimeter dome tweeter. It's a balanced dome. And by balanced dome, if you can kind of think about it, a lot of people see tweeters and it's just one continuous dome. But in the PEI tweeters, it's actually kind of like a cone with a dome. It's almost like a really, really, really small speaker, like a woofer. 
with a dust cap on it, but it's called a, it's a balanced dome or a PEI uh, balanced polymer, polyether imide dome. And the balanced dome, it's a really soft material. Uh, by doing that dome, it's not as rigid. We get a nice rigid strength out of it because of the shaping, because we actually do a cone and then we do like a dust cap on it. So it's really a nice, it's a little speaker, but it's a little tweeter. That's what it is. And it's Neo. So all the tweeters in these guys, Neodymium we use because it keeps them small. That's one of the things, it's how we get the tweeters back in as far as we can is we use Neo tweeters on all of these, including in the DS lineup. And so, for nominal impedance, I'm just going to go through the sheet right here and kind of run through. I'm going to give you guys the sizes that are available on these, and then I'm also going to give you the, uh, the retail or UMAP pricing that's on this, so you'll have an idea of all the speakers that are available in the DS line. So we do a three and a half inch driver in that. It's a two inch, it's a two way, so it's got the tweeter and then the three and a half inch cone. That's 20 watts RMS, and then there's that magical peak rating that we talked about earlier. It's 80 watts peak. Guy, it's 20 watts RMS. You could put these on a factory radio. You could put these on a 35, 45. I mean, as long as you set the game properly, you could probably use a 50 watt channel amplifier, no problem at all in these. But just keep in mind, it's 20 watts RMS, 80 watts peak. Uh, they do not come with a grill. Three and a half, nine times out of 10, they're all going underneath factory grill locations. You just don't need a grill with those. We don't include a grill with those. And those carry an MSRP or a UMAP, I'm just gonna do that, it's, it's they're $39.90 a pair. So 40 bucks a pair, and that's for the DS three and a half inch drivers. You move down from that into the four inch, the four inch driver, we rate that at 30 watts RMS or 120 watts peak. Again, I'm gonna give you the peak ratings because we have them on these products, but again, I'm gonna stress with you, thank RMS power ratings. When you're trying to size, you look at amplifiers, just thank RMS. Um, when you look at those, the four inch, we do include a grill with that in case you're gonna do your own installation or put in a place where you need a grill. And that driver, you're looking at $49.90 a pair. So basically 50 bucks a set. Go down into a four by six. There's a lot of GM cars that still use four by six drivers. Or if you have an older truck or vehicle that has that, we still provide a four by six in that. Again, 30 watts RMS, 120 peak. No grill, because if you're using a 4x6, they're always going under dash location or behind uh, GM in a lot of their cases in the rear. They've used 4x6s in the rear in some of their vehicles on that. And when you get into the 4x6, we're looking at those are the same price, 50 bucks a set for the 4x6. Then we also do a five and a quarter, 50 watts RMS, 200 watts peak. We do include a grill with the five and a quarter, so if you need to use the grill, you can. If it's going under a stock location, just take the grill and put it in the trash can or back in the box, whichever you need. The five and a quarter, those retail, or the UMAP on those is uh, 60 bucks a pair, so 59.90. Then you move down to a six and a half, that's 60 watts RMS, 240 watts peak. And then we also do, and I'm gonna do these together because we also do a six and three quarters. It carries the same rating, 60 watts RMS, 240 watts peak, and the price on those is identical. Both of those are 69.90 or we call it 70 bucks a pair. The reason we do a six and a half and we do a six and three quarter without trying to get too confusing, the industry for a long time, what we've called a six and a half inch speaker forever was really a six and three quarter. Um, don't, don't know why, don't know where the wires got crossed, but just the size of that speaker, we all called them six and a half, but if you measured them out, they were actually six and three quarters. Then Honda and Toyota and a few other people came along, be probably in the 90s, and they came out with a true six and a half, and it was also fairly shallow. And if you guys out there have had the opportunity to install them in a Honda, you know, the first thing you had to do was either take the door off or take that lower pod off. Then you had this plastic ring, you took the speaker out, you had to take that plastic ring out or do it in the door if you wanted. And there was this rain shield that went across the back that was, you had to cut that rain shield out to even get the speaker to go in there. If you were doing true six and three quarters, they didn't fit this way real well and you had to make your own screw holes and it was kind of an odd arrangement to get them to fit. But a, a true six and a half, it goes right in, it can use the factory holes and it'll cinch right into that back into that uh, factory bracket. So that's why we do a six and a half and a six and three quarter. The only reason you would use the six and a half is if you have one of those undersized openings and you don't want to get into the hassle of cutting and drilling and modifying and doing a lot of work that you don't want to. Throw the six and a half in there and call it a day. If you got a true six and a half inch opening or a full size opening, or if you're doing your own work, you're making a portable box or you're doing something for yourself or making your own set of home speakers, whatever you're doing, buy the six and three quarter and get that little bit of extra cone real estate. Don't, don't get the six and a half if, if you can use the grill and use the six and three quarter. But if you've got a car that needs a six and a half, that's why we do both. So I want to cover those both at the same time because the power rating and the pricing is basically the same on those. And then we also do a six by eight. That's a very popular speaker. It, it comes and goes. A lot of the imports use six by eights. Uh, Ford's use six by eights in some things. Mazda's use six by eights in some things. So we do a six by eight in that line. It's 50 watts RMS, 200 watts peak. 
and we do not include a grill with those because the six by eight, you're only going to use a six by eight in a factory location under a factory door. You're, you're never going to choose to mount a six by eight in anything else and want a grill because if you're going to do a six by eight, you just do a six by nine, which we'll get to. Those retail for also 70 bucks for the set on the six by eights. And then last but not least, we do a six by nine. It's rated at 90 watts RMS, 360 watts peak. Gotta love that peak power rating. And those retail for $79.90 a pair. Now in the six by nine, besides the 13 millimeter or half inch PEI dome tweeter, we also add a inch and three quarter or a 45 millimeter mid-range to that. So the six by nine is a three-way speaker. So where DS fits, really is if you've got a factory system or if you have just an aftermarket radio, a nice, good aftermarket, high-powered radio, which if it's high-powered, you know it's really going to be about 20 to 25 watts times four. Uh, and then if that's all you got, you, you have no desire for an amplifier. You're not really looking to add a subwoofer. You're just wanting some sound in your car because you're driving from point A to point B and you just want some clean, reliable sound that's going to be with you there all the time. You want it backed by a company that's got an outstanding warranty. Look at DS. It's going to fit in. It's very efficient. It's going to work great with those lower power ratings. And if you want to add an amplifier, these speakers can accept an amplifier. But really, they're designed for that lower power rating that you're looking at that's typically just straight off of a head unit. And that would be a typical DS customer, and that's why we make the DS, and there's a lot of people that fit into that category. Now, when you move out of DS, the next thing up the line would be CS, and that's the next speaker up the chain. Now, when you look at those, they are basically a tuned and tweaked upgrade from the DS drivers. Uh, we do a color change. These also use a poly uh, ether iMide tweeter in these as well, but it's tuned slightly differently. We actually color it a little bit differently, so it's really easy to distinguish whether you're looking at the CS or the DS. You notice that we do a nice kind of like a golf ball dimple around it's kind of like a waveguide around that tweeter, and then it has a protective cover and a dispersion ring on top of that that tweeter to help control the high frequencies. Uh, something, and, and we'll get into this a little bit more when we get into the QS or the bigger drivers is, uh, speakers are all, they can all beam or be directional. But we really talk about it and focus on it when we talk about tweeters because smaller tweeters, like a half inch tweeter or a three quarter inch tweeter, they actually are less beamy, meaning they have a wider dispersion pattern. So they go out wider. If I can do this to the camera, I'll go, I'll go like this. So they have a very wide dispersion pattern. But when you start getting the tweeter bigger, there's first off, going to a bigger tweeter has some benefits because you can cross the tweeter over lower, which is great. You can get a little more of that fuller sound or that mid-range up in your tweeter. But then when you go to the larger tweeter, any larger tweeter, this is what happens to the beam pattern. It actually focuses down and gets narrower. So when you go into a bigger tweeter like KS, or even step up further, let's go into QS, because QS goes up to a full one inch or a 25 millimeter tweeter, it's gonna be a more focused pattern. Now, if you're doing a custom install and you're doing QS components, it's not a problem. You're gonna mount that tweeter where you need, how you need to get that tweeter aimed how you want. You may be a guy who's gonna take a laser beam, you're gonna aim those tweeters so they cross and intersect right at the head above, or at the uh, dome light above, or maybe at your head, or one at each ear. You, you're, if you're buying that type of speaker, you're gonna put some time, thought, and effort in the install. So having the larger dome tweeter is great because you get more of the lower, lower tweet, upper mid out of it, and you can deal with the pattern not being as wide, it's a little more focused. These speakers, you're looking at DS and KS, you know, all of these are drop-in door replacements. You're putting them in a door, they're maybe not in the best locations that are in the door, and that tweeter needs to have as wide a dispersion pattern as possible. So a lot of times people ask, well, why does CS and DS have a half-inch tweeter, but you move to KS, it's got a three-quarter? Well, there's a lot of things that change, but also understand drop-in direct replacement speakers where you're not going to be aiming the tweeter, it's great to have that smaller tweeter because you get a wider dispersion pattern. So I'm not saying bigger is always better, but don't always let size be the dictating factor on how you choose your tweeter because there are things that go into that whole soup of how to design a speaker that an acoustic engineer takes into account when he's making it. So when we look at CS, we also rib UV treated polyester foam surrounds that tweeter. Tim's over here, he's, he's, he's giving me the okay symbol, so I'm just gonna keep going. Um, we got the gold dome on that. 13 millimeter polyamide is like I told you on that. And when you move into CS, you have the option, we're gonna go through the whole lineup, but not only do these in coaxials, we also offer CS components, and we sell a lot of CS components. So I'm gonna go through my cheat sheet here once again and give you guys both sizing and pricing on the CS speakers. So to give you an idea here, oh, look at him cleaning that up. Isn't that just pretty? So we're gonna start into the CS line. We do a three and a half inch driver, 
Uh, no grill, obviously it's a three and a half, it goes under the dash. That three and a half inch driver carries a 30 watt RMS power handling and a 90 watt peak. Uh, so you can see it's 10 watts more RMS than we were looking at the DS speakers, and it carries a, uh, a retail of basically 50 bucks a set, 49.95. Go up into a four inch driver, we're looking at 50 watts RMS, 150 watts peak, does come with a grill, so if you're doing your own custom project or need a grill to mount that speaker, whatever you're doing, you got it there. Uh, four inch drivers, I don't know why, if they seem to find them that into a lot of fishing boats. A lot of guys who just want a little bit of audio out on their bass fishing boat, four inch drivers tend to find a home there a lot. Uh, and that driver, you're looking at uh, 60 bucks for a set of those, 59.95. We also do a four by six, it's 50 watts RMS, 150 watts peak. Those also go for 59.95 or 60 bucks. And then we do move up into a five and a quarter does come with a grill, so if you're doing your own custom application, it's not under a factory location, you need a grill, you got it there. It's 75 watts RMS, 225 watts peak, and those are going to be 79.95 or 80 bucks a set retail. Now, same as in the DS, we also do a six and a half and a six and three quarter. We do that in both of these lines down here. So you're looking at a six and a half and the six and three quarter, they both carry 100 watts RMS power handling, 300 watts peak, those drivers are going to be $79.95 either one, so 80 bucks a pair, whether you need a six and a half or six and three quarter. We do that infamous six by eight in case you got a Ford mounting or a Mazda mounting or any other that need that. They're 75 watts RMS, 225 peak, and those are uh, 80 bucks a pair as well, $79.95. And then last but not least, the infamous six by nine. Give me some sit by nines. They're 109, that is the retail price on those for a pair. They're 150 RMS, 450 peak, but the cool part on these, when you move up to the CS, we actually add a two inch or a 50 millimeter uh, mid-range onto those, so it is a true three-way six by nine. CS, again, application-wise, this could also be a speaker that you're hooking up into a factory radio. You could also use this in an aftermarket situation, though typically we recommend if you're looking at CS, it'll work in those cases, but you're probably using an amplifier. You're probably, you've got a 30 watt by four, or 45 watt by four, or 50 by four, or 65 watt by four. You've probably got a little bit bigger power amp that you're dealing with, and that's where CS would be a great upgrade into that. Uh, you get the, the different tuning, you get the different phase plug, you get the different dispersion on top of that, and like all the rest of them, they're designed to fit. Uh, proudly, CS and DS, like I said, I think it's a little over 90% of the vehicles that are on the road today, these will drop in and you don't have to worry about fitment issues, whether it's from the back of the magnet to the glass or the mechanical structure to roll the window up and down, and also the tweeter protrusion on the front. So that gets you into CS. Now stepping out of CS, I'm gonna pull that over here. Actually, whoa, let me change that. I gotta go over the, the uh, components. My bad, guys, appreciate that. It's on a separate page, so I didn't see it right in front of me. But we also offer, like I told you, the CS is available in components. And in the components, we do the, the common sizes that everybody's working with, and that's six and a half, six and three quarters, so that oversized six and a half. We do them in a six by eight, a six by nine, and we offer the tweeter separately. And I'll get to the tweeter on its own here in a second, but basically on the six and a half, we do those, it's 100 watts RMS, 300 watts peak, and the six and three quarters identical. 100 watts RMS, six and three quarter, or 300 watts peak, and both of those uh, in the six, uh, the sheets here backwards, sorry, let me read it. It's 159.95, so basically 160 bucks a pair on those. And these come with a three quarter inch, 20 millimeter titanium dome tweeter. So when you step out of the CS coaxles, in the CS coaxles you've got that uh, half or 13 millimeter PEI dome tweeter, but when you move into the separates or the components, we actually take you up into a full three quarter inch titanium dome tweeter on those. It comes with a 6 dB uh, crossover at 4.5 kilohertz. That's where we cross over the tweeters and all of them at. And there's also a switch on the crossover so you can attenuate the tweeter. There, it's actually a zero, a three, and a 6 dB switch. Uh, it's, we don't like to put negative on it, so it's all in positive, but basically 6 dB is zero, and then minus six and minus three, you kind of get my drift. But it allows you to adjust the output of that tweeter so that you can match it. The reason you'd want to adjust that tweeter would be really dependent on where you put it. It may be too bright, so you need to tune it down. It could be the materials in your car. If you have a car that has a lot of hard surfaces and hard materials, you might want to run that tweeter attenuator down so that it's not so much high-end refracting around. If you got a car that's maybe got some softer materials or something like that, or cloth versus plastic, cloth versus leather, things like that, actually adjusting that tweeter can change how it sonically sounds in your vehicle. So we give you that tweeter attenuator on there, and again, one of the big keys, remember, is remember when you step up to the components in the CS, you're going to that full three-quarter inch 
titanium dome tweeter that's on there. So the six and a half and six and three quarter, we also do a six by eight, that's 75 watts RMS, 225 peak, that six by eight gets you to 159.95 or 160 bucks for the set, basically the same price as the six and a half and six and three quarter. And then we also do a six by nine, and that's a two-way six by nine, so it's the six by nine with the three quarter inch titanium dome tweeter, that's 150 watts RMS, Again, I have to say it because it's on there, the 450 watts peak, but just remember guys, RMS. Just think RMS and we'll all be happy here. So 150, 450 RMS, and those retail for 179 a pair on those. So that gets you into those. And then I'm looking for, let me one second here, the way this sheet's set up, I may not have it right there where I need it. There it is right there. We do offer that tweeter, that three quarter inch tweeter. If you just need to add a tweeter to whatever you have, whether it's your factory system or your aftermarket speakers, and you want to put a tweeter in a different location, you want to get the highs up more, you want to get some more high end off the glass, however you want to do it, if you just need to add a tweeter, we do offer that same three quarter inch titanium dome tweeter as a separate. It comes with a flush mount, it comes with surface mount, and it comes with a pod mount. So you can do it in all three mountings, flush, surface, or angled. And those are 50 watts RMS. Uh, they come with a 6 dB crossover at 4.5K built in line. So you can utilize that. You don't have to add a separate crossover. Can if you want, if you're doing electronic or however you're doing it, but it comes with a crossover, so you're good to go. And those retail for 70 bucks a pair. And that's the three quarter inch tweeter out of the CS line. I really want to stress it on the CS. Understand when you're in the coaxials, you're getting that half inch PEI tweeter. But when you step into the components or separates, you're moving up to that three quarter inch full titanium tweeter. So it is a big step up in as far as what the tweeter is and the crossover capability when you move out of coaxials and you move into the components or separates. So that takes us into CS. Now, Ernie, if you'll bring up the screen, I want to talk about the KS family. That's the next one on my agenda. And when we move into KS, it's very, it's, I don't want to say it's similar to CS as far as what it is, because it's completely not. But like the CS, we offer these in both a coaxial and we offer these in component systems. And this is also the line that has the really cool, that, and people keep asking about it, when's it going to be available? It's coming, but has the KS MT, which is this new, I like to call it the snowman, because that's kind of what it looks like. But this is the KSMT mid tweeter pod, and this is in the KS line. Uh, this utilizes a two and a half inch uh, aluminum dome mid-range, and then it incorporates that three quarter inch tweeter on top of there. These are gonna be fantastic. We know we're gonna sell a lot of these. People are, just can't wait to get these. It's gonna give you the ability to quickly and easily get great staging and imaging in your car because you can get that mid and high, up high and up wide where you wanna have it in your car. So, and when you move over to KS, some big changes happen in there. We have, we call it internally damped uh, poly blend cones. We actually put a lot more work into the cone material on these to dampen and control how they sound. It is, it's still a polymer cone, so it's going to work great in that UV heat and moisture ridden environment called your automobile. So they're going to work great there. We move the entire line over into a soft dome silk tweeter. Um, the debate for what sounds best, is it a PEI dome? Is it a titanium dome? Is it an aluminum dome? Is it a soft dome? Will never ever be fixed in my life here on this planet. They do sound different. Uh, a soft dome tweeter or a silk dome tweeter tends to have a little more uh, natural sound. It doesn't have quite as much on the very top end. Um, so it's a great sounding tweeter and it's a soft dome so it gets the job done. In the KS lineup, we offer these in four ohm. The tweeters are three quarter inch or 20 millimeters in the silk dome. It's all stamp frames and the entire KS line is built around that same premise of it needs to fit or it doesn't do you a lick of good. So shallow on the magnet so we don't run into the windows or motor structures in the car and keeping that tweeter protrusion down as far as we can and to accomplish that obviously Neo tweeters again. So even though these are three quarter inch soft dome tweeters in the coaxials, it's all neodymium magnets on those so we can get that tweeter sucked back in as tight as we can to keep that mounting depth as shallow as we can on both directions. Uh, you have to look at it both ways in a car because any car today, everyone is just putting them underneath the factory mounting panel. So tweeter protrusion is a big deal. You gotta make sure that factory panel goes back on. So with all that said, rubber surrounds. So we move away from the UV treated foam surrounds. We use in the DS and the KS. We move up into a full rubber surround on these. The KS is more of what I'd like to call approaching 
um, an audiophile type speaker. Uh, the KS is a more refined sound, it's more refined materials, it's a more refined tweeter. It's going to be smoother sounding. It's designed to also still get loud. I mean, I've had a lot of guys out there talk about how they just love their KS speakers, that, that, that they're loud and they sound great and they cut through wind noise. Yes, they're going to do all that, but KS is designed to be like that, that middle of the road every day. I want great sounding speakers. I want better than factory. I, I want to do a little bit better than a, a small PEI dome tweeter. I'm looking to get a fuller, more audiophile experience. That's where KS is going to take you is down that road. And we offer these in both coaxials and we offer these in components. And so again, I got my cheat sheet here so we can go through this. The first thing I want to make note of when we talk KS, there's no peak power ratings that we discuss. We give you a range of power that we say that these speakers work really well with, and we don't talk about the peak ratings. Obviously, if you've moved into, if you're a KS customer, you, you, know, you find maybe you've cut your teeth on speakers, you've learned a little bit, you figured out that peak power ratings on everything is utter garbage and doesn't mean anything, so you don't really need to see those ratings, they don't mean anything to you, you want to know realistically what's the power range I can use these speakers in, uh, what am I going to get out of it. Once you're that type of customer, you know that, okay, yeah, I know it says it's 50 watts, but I can put it on a 100 watt amp, I'm going to set my amp up so it doesn't clip, I'm going to be responsible with my volume knob, I'm not worried about it, and you won't have to worry about it. Uh, I run a lot more power in my speakers than they're rated all the time, home and car but the responsibility relies on me and the volume knob as to whether I'm gonna have problems. So when you reach up into KS, hopefully you've cut your teeth a little bit. We all started somewhere and didn't know anything, and then you step up to this, you know a little bit more than you did when you started. So going down through that line, we're gonna look into these, they're all four ohm, by the way, that's an underlying theme, all the coaxials and components, I'm gonna keep saying it again, it's four ohms, four ohms nominal impedance on these. But the newest one, I'm gonna cover it first, and it's up here, I think, isn't the two and three quarter up here on the shelf? Oh, it's over here. So I'm gonna have uh, Tim actually come here and zoom on this because this is another one of the drivers that since we've released it, people absolutely can't get enough of this little two and three quarter inch driver. Now, the entire KS line is polymer blended cones, internally damped. When it came to this little driver right here, now that's just a full range driver, there's no tweeter, that is truly a two and three quarter inch mid-range. But to get the frequency response we wanted out of this driver, this is a paper product. Now it is rubber surround, but it is a paper product. And this was because the engineers wanted to get this thing out. If you look at this on an RTA and plot, it runs out 18 to 20K. We actually rate it out to 20K. It rolls off a little bit out there, but it's within the plus and minus 3 dB. This little puppy will play 400 out to 20K. So even if you don't have a separate tweeter, it still sounds like you got some great highs coming out of that driver. And if you're someone who's looking to build your own three-way setup, or you have a car that's got that location in the dash where you need to drop in a two and three quarter driver, you can put that in there right out of the get-go and be good to go. Uh, that's why we do the component set here, which is the six by nine and just that, I call it a middler for that size. Uh, and there's a lot of cars out there you can do that. Then if you decide you want to do a three-way, you need a little more high-end, you can just add a separate tweeter and get into a true three-way setup with that if you want to. But that is is a fantastic little product. So I'm just starting with that one because it's kind of the oddity of the bunch because it uses a paper cone and not the mica poly blended cones. And it was a material choice based on getting the frequency response we wanted out of that particular driver. So keep that in mind. So with that little two and three quarters, that's rated 15 to 50 watts RMS. No peak rating, it's just 15 to 50. So you could potentially run it off of a high powered head unit if you want to. Uh, you're gonna get better performance out of it if you get you know, edge up closer to that 50 watt RMS mark, but we just give you a range of power that we recommend for the driver, and that's 15 to 50 watts RMS. We do include a little capacitor with these. It's a 6 dB high pass at uh, 800, if I remember correctly. It might be 400. It's either 400 or 800. I, I apologize if I'm lying on the number. It's either one of those two. So right out of the gate, you can just use that 6 dB high pass crossover, and you can use it in a system active, uh, passively. Or if you're doing your own three-way setup and you're going active, which most guys do in three ways, you're going full active, you can just not use that cap and go fully active and do what you need to do. So on that driver, we're looking at uh, a, re a UMAP or retail of $49.95, so basically 50 bucks a pair for those. Then of course we move into, we do a two three and a half, which includes the soft dome, it's a uh, half, uh, 13 millimeter or half inch, soft dome, cloth dome tweeter on that three and a half. Power ratings, 15 to 50 watts RMS. And there, yeah, Tim's got it zoomed in right there. That's the three and a half in the KS line. And if you look at that one right there, those retail for $69.95 or basically 70 bucks a pair for the three and a half. We move into the four inch, we rate that one from 15 to 75 watts RMS. 
Those four inch drivers are going to be $89.95 a pair. And what's kind of cool about the four inch driver, it comes with the uh, four, the four pin, uh, it's called a pin cushion mount, it's four holes, but those tabs are actually perforated. And if you need to and you need a three hole mount, you can actually break two of those tabs off to fit into what's called a football mount, because some of those four inch mountings out there in the world only use two mounting holes. So what you do literally is on the four inch, you can just take a pair of uh, pliers and grab the tab and just wiggle it back and forth a few times and snap it off. And so you can do a four pin mount, a pin cushion, you can do a football mount with just two of them, or you can break all the tabs off and use the three hole uh, ring adapter for three hole mounting. So that's a very versatile four inch driver designed to fit in a lot of different factory applications. So it's got that bracketry and that design so it's easy to use on that. So that's the four inch. We also do a four by six and a four by 10. Those are still sizes we still see in a lot of cars, whether it's new ones or guys who are still driving cars around on the road that are running, they need to have that size speaker. Both of those are rated at for 15 to 75 watts and both of those are rated at uh, 89.95 for the four by six and 119.95 for the four by 10. So those are the two uh, really kind of, I call them odd sizes, but they're still out there in factory situations, the four by six and the five by 10, or the four by 10. And then we do a five and a quarter. It's rated 15 to 75 watts RMS. That's the power rating on the five and a quarter. The five and a quarter is also 119.95. That's the uh, MSRP or UMAP on that speaker there. Then we go into the same story here. We do a six and a half and a true six and three quarter. So we have both those available. Both of those are 15 to 100 watts RMS and both of those retail for 119.95 a pair. So whether you need the true six and a half to fit the smaller uh, import sizes or you're gonna go to a true six and three quarter. And just like on the others, we do not include a grill on the six and a half because if you're using a six and a half, it's because you have to, to fit those factory openings. But if you're doing your own projects or doing your wherever else you may be and you need a grill, we do include a grill on the six and three quarter. Uh, five and the five and a quarter, just for reference on this, we don't include a grill on the five and a quarter because if you're using a five and a quarter, it's typically because you have to in a factory location. Um, but if you are doing your own project, we do offer the five and a quarter inch grills separately. So if you're doing the five and a quarter on the KS, you can get the five and a quarter inch grill as an accessory for that if you need it. Then we move up into, we also do the six by eight, which like I says that Ford Mazda and some oddball sizes out there, it's 15 to 75 watts RMS. And on that six by eight, it's also 119 bucks for a pair of those. And uh, moving from that, we go into the six by nine. Keep in mind, and I didn't do that when we went through there, when we get past the four by 10 and you move into the five and a quarter, the six and a half, the six and three quarter, the six by eights and the six by nines, the tweeter moves from a half inch soft dome up into a three quarter inch soft dome. So the size of the tweeter gets bigger because we can. And that's all a balancing act between getting the performance out of the driver and keeping that tweeter protrusion down as far as we can so that it fits in all those different applications. So that's why in the, in the KS line you'll see as we bounce around from a half inch to a three quarter, they're both soft dome tweeters, same material, it's just we use different sizes so we can fit those applications for both how they sound and to get them to fit in those applications. So when we get into the six by nine, we do a six by nine two-way and we do a six by nine three-way in the KS line. So the two-way and the three-way, they're both rated 15 to 150 watts. And as far as pricing goes on the two-way six by nine, we're looking at 139 for a pair. And if you move up into the three-way, we're at 169 for the pair. The cool part about it is when you move to the three-way, we add a one inch or 25 millimeter soft dome mid-range to the mix as well, along with that three quarter inch soft dome tweeter. And so that right there basically rounds out the KS coaxial line. And if you're a KS customer, you're looking for a little more refined sound. It's still gonna get loud. We're kicker, we're known for being loud, so don't have to worry about that. These are gonna play loud. They're gonna be great. They're gonna give you great mid bass in the doors, back or front or rear deck, whatever you need to work with. Um, they're gonna give you great bass too if you don't have a subwoofer. I mean, you can only get so much out of a six and a half and a six by nine in a vehicle, but if you didn't have a sub, these are still gonna give you good bass response. But if you do add a sub, and and then you add a crossover so you can get that real low base out of those drivers that they're really not designed to produce. It's just going to be even that much better for you. But if you're looking to go the next step up, obviously in the KS line, that would be moving over into the components. So I'm going to pull out my components right here and get my price sheet on components. So give me just one second. I really wish I could memorize all of this for you guys, but I really, really can't memorize it all. I have to have cheat sheets. So we move into the KS series components. Those all come with the three quarter inch or 20 millimeter titanium dome tweeter 
on the component sets on those. They all come with crossovers. It's 12 dB at 4 uh, K, so we do a high pass or a high pass low pass at 4 kilohertz at 12 dB per octave. That's the external crossover that comes with these. There is the switch on there, so you can do it on these. It's 0, 4.5, and, and 9, so that's the attenuator positions that exist on the component KS speakers on that uh, external crossover. So you can do 0, 4.5, or 9 dB as far as attenuators on that. And we do these in the components. We do them in a 5 and a quarter. Rating on that is 15 to 100 watts. And the five and a quarter system comes into us at 249 for the pair. That's for the whole system. Then we also do a six and a half and a six and three quarter. Those both are 15 to 125 watts. RMS rating on those. Same price, 249.95 for the pair. There's a theme going on here, guys. Pay attention. You get into the six by eight. Those are 15 to 100 watts RMS. 249.95 for the pair. And last but not least, the 6x9, 15 to 125 rots. And guess what? 249.95 for the pair. So basically, whatever size, if you want to move up to the KS components, whatever size you need, they're all the same price. So you just pick the size you need that fits your application. 249.95 gets you in and you're out the door. What's really cool on these, on the six and a half, the six and three quarter, and the six by nines, we do include some factory style adapters. So if you've got some of those odd GM mountings or things like that, where you got to put the speaker into this odd looking basket that's actually got tabs going different directions to mount it into there, we provide those on the six by nines, we provide those on the six and a half, and we provide those on the six and three quarters in the uh, coax or the components or the separate system packs that are there. So that's really cool. Tim's actually got a close up of the one that comes with the six by nine right there. And that bracket, it's, it is the factory style bracket that you need in a lot of cases in order to mount these speakers into a lot of the vehicles that have that odd mounting situation. Now in the KS line as well, we already kind of talked about it, but I'm gonna come back around and talk about it again. We also offer the uh, Snowman, the KSMT dual pods. These are going to carry a retail of $299.95. That's for the KSMT tweeter pod. Those are basically 300 bucks for the set. That includes both pods. They both include the two and a half inch mid-range and the three quarter inch tweeter. It includes the inline crossovers to get the job done. So you can add these and have, be up and running and have a, basically a three-way system when you add this to your factory speaker or to whatever aftermarket speaker you got in your door, and boom, there's your three-way system ready to go. Those are there, and then we also offer and I, they're spread here out here on the price sheet, so I apologize. Let me turn back here to them. We offer two tweeters in the KS line, two separate tweeters. So if you just want to or need to add on a separate tweeter, we offer these in a three-quarter inch, and we offer them in a one inch. So you got your option between those two. Uh, the three-quarter inch, we, we rate for 15 to 65 watts RMS. The one inch, we rate for 15 to 150 watts RMS. Understand, that is using the included inline crossovers. No, you can't just run the tweeter with that much power without any crossovers. So keep that in mind. That includes using the crossover that's there. Um, they both come with flush surface and pod mounting capability. They have 12 dB per octave at 4.5 or 4,500 hertz crossover points. So they're ready to go out of the box, good to go. And as far as pricing on those, the three-quarter inch, you're looking they retail for 100 bucks a pair, and then the one inch retails for 120 bucks a pair. And so those are just the separate tweeters, the three quarter tweeter and the one inch tweeter, uh, whichever one you might want to need or want to use, they're both available in the KS line. Uh, they're both silk dome, so you can, if you're looking for a little more refined sound than that titanium dome that comes in the CS components, step up to the KS components, you're gonna move, move over into a soft dome tweeter, and it is gonna be that more refined sound, more silky sound, uh, more critical listening sound, I guess you want, but it'll still, if you need to play Inner Sandman and get some volume out of it, you're still gonna get that as well. So that covers the KS line of products, and that lets me jump into the last but not least part of the show, which is my favorite, which is QS. And QS drivers, uh, this is, once you reach up here, this is the pinnacle of kicker engineering and materials that go into this. Um, they sound utterly fantastic. Uh, Dave Gamini at the beginning of the show is one of the guys that chimed in and said the coaxials are some of the best coaxials he's ever heard. I'll chime in on that as well. I think the Q series coax speakers are some of the best sounding coax speakers I've ever heard. Um, they are very smooth, they're very detailed, they're very lifelike. They sound absolutely wonderful. And like I said, I've got six by eight openings in my vehicle and I'm gonna get John to give me a hand. We're gonna, we're gonna make that work. I'm putting six by nines on opening because I want that speaker in my car. When I heard it and I knew it was time to replace my speakers, I knew that was a speaker I was gonna reach for and put in my car. So we got coaxials, 
and we have components. And this is the thing to keep in mind. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to walk down here and grab one. I'm actually going to grab the six by nine. And I'm going to grab this one. Don't be mad at me. So I'm going to set these two here on the table real quick. Maybe Tim can get a close up view, a little bit of those while I set them here. When you look at the coax versus the component, I want you to notice the significant change in size on the motor structures on the back. Now, the components were the first ones that we designed and built, and these have been around, I don't want to say forever, but the QS line of drivers have been around a very long time. Um, they have, when I get in the materials, you'll know why. We have designed these to sound and use materials and give you the quality that really, we don't know anything yet to do better than this right now, than in this. But then we designed the coaxles, and when it came into the coaxles, it was all about trying to get these to fit in factory locations. So people want great sound like this, but they can't, they can't or won't cut the doors up, have to deal with mounting depths, all sorts of other things. And if you noticed on that speaker, when you go into the coaxles on the Q-Line, these use neodymium magnets on the mid-range and the base driver on the back. So these are very compact, they're very small. I mean, there you're looking at the entire magnet structure on that 6 9 speaker, but understand that is a neo magnet. Don't let the size fool you. These things have awesome performance. It's just that we chose to use neo, and neo is a much more expensive magnet material to use. You only really choose to use neo if you're trying to save uh, size or weight or depth. Uh, that's when you go to Neo. Uh, Neo doesn't sound better than ferrite. Uh, Neo just lets you get the same magnetic strength you would need. And if you normally need a magnet this big and be a chunk of uh, you know the old ferrite motors, you can go down to something like this with Neo and get the same magnetic strength because Neo is so much stronger of a material. So just understand it's a design decision why and when you use Neo. It's not that Neo sounds better. It all has to do with size and weight and depth and dimensions on that. So when you get into the QS speakers, these are just fantastic. These use all rubber surrounds. You'll notice, maybe Timmy will zoom in on uh, the six and a half that's over there, but it has our legendary blue stitching around there that holds the, the surround to the cone. And the cones that are on these, it's a little bit different cone than what we use on the component speaker, but I also want to call it out because it's there. This is actually a carbon fiber poly cone. So it's not just a standard polymer cone, and it's not carbon fiber by itself, but it's a carbon poly blend. And so this cone gives you kind of the best of all worlds. You get that carbon fiber blended in there. It gives you lots of lightweight and strength. The polymer that's in there, you know, you got that UV resistance, you got that water resistance, you've got all that moisture resistance that's in there, the heat resistance. So this is a very high-end material. And the tweeter itself, and I'm gonna just do this right here since I pulled this down here. The tweeter itself is actually sunk in as like a point source. It's actually dropped into the driver. And this right here is actually an integrated waveguide. So that whole piece that's in there around the tweeter is a waveguide to help control that tweeter as it comes out and blend it into everything that's coming off that cone. There's a lot of design that goes into the QS 6x9 and the QS 6 and 3 quarter inch speaker. And even though I didn't grab it and pull it down here, I'll let Tim move the camera down and get a shot of it. The crossover that comes with these, these are coaxial products, but they are fully biampable. So on coming out the back of the driver, there is actually an input for the mid range and an input for the tweeter, and it's an external crossover that comes along with these. And that external crossover lets you do, it's 18 dB per octave crossover at about 5.5 kilohertz where we do that out. These are wonderful sounding components. With the six by nine and the uh, six and three quarter, it covers most sizes that are out there. If this will fit into your car, you need to take a listen to these. These are wonderful, wonderful sounding drivers. With that said, as far as power handling, both the six and three quarter and the six by nine, it's both 100 watts RMS. Uh, we have this 200 watt peak rating. Uh, these, these peak ratings, like I said, just ignore the peak ratings. People want to know what they are in some cases. Uh, we actually use peak ratings on these drivers before we start to pull those away and not use them in the KS line, so we still have them applicable in this line. So 100 and 200, but 
But then on pricing, it doesn't matter which one you go with, they're 379 a pair. And when you look at that, that's going to get you the speaker, that's going to get you a pair of those, it's going to get you a pair of the external crossovers, and these also include, and unfortunately we don't have them all down here on the show, but if you hit the website, you'll see them there. We include factory adapters for these as well, just like we do in the KS. So there are factory adapters for the six and three quarter, and there are factory adapters for the six by nine, so that you can mount these into the different situations that you run into as far as those weird factory mounting positions. So that's the coax. I'm going to put this one back. And then I'm going to grab, Tim can, I'm going to leave that down there because Tim can focus on it. When you move out of that and then you move into the components, we do two components in these. We basically do the six and a half and we do the six and three quarter. And in most cases, you know, I did warn you about the size on these, but I'm going to just hold this at a side view here so Uri can get, or Tim can get in on this. You'll notice that it's really still not very deep. I mean, even when you saw it compared to the six by, and this is pretty compact in this direction, but it is a huge, huge motor that is on this component speaker. And these things have lots of throw, they have lots of travel, they make great mid base. You notice they got the push terminals on here so you can do your connectivity for your speaker wires on there. And probably the standout feature, I mean, it's a cast basket, obviously, in this style and type of component when you get to this price class. But the cone that's on these is extremely, extremely unique, and it is a tri-laminate cone. And the cone that comes on the mid-range slash mid-base drivers, this is actually, it's three layers if you were to take a look at it. It's actually a, a foam called Roacel. Uh, we don't make Roacel foam. We simply buy it like anyone else who would choose to use it. And Roacel is a very lightweight structural foam. And then that is sandwiched in between a layer of poly and a layer of carbon fiber. So this is a sandwiched cone. It's extremely light. It's extremely rigid. It's very musical. It has a very quick attack. It doesn't, there, I mean, it, the sound it attacks and it's gone. It doesn't ring, it doesn't resonate. It's very light. It's very, very musical sounding on this driver. And it's this cone. Um, hey, Ernie, chime out if you know, but I think we've used this cone for, for 10 years. At least, at, at least 10 years. It might even be going on 12 years. Um, this cone is just a fantastic cone. Now, we've done a couple different versions of Q throughout the years. This is probably... Do what? SS. Yeah, exactly. It was on the original SS. And that was 05? Oh, so we're looking at 15, 16 years. So it's even longer than I thought it was. Uh, this cone, guys, that trilaminate cone with those three materials, it's just a very lightweight musical cone. We haven't found anything else better to use. That's why we keep on using it. We've changed models, changed coloring, gone some different directions, changed the crossover. We've done some other things, but this cone has stayed, and like he said, since 2005 in the original SS speakers is when we launched this cone. It is a fantastic cone. Now, I didn't cover this feature on the KS, and I apologize for that, but on the KS components, you can do the same thing I'm getting ready to show you here. If you want to turn this into a coax, a high-end coax. So it's a component, and this that I'm screwing out, this is a solid aluminum milled phase plug. And I'm gonna take this out. Boom, take it out. So this is the solid aluminum milled phase plug that comes along for the ride. So if you're using it as a component, you use that. But if I take that tweeter out, now I can use the other parts that come with the kit, and I can drop this tweeter right into here, and I can turn this into a coax mounted high-end component system. So literally the tweeter wire would go right through the pole, it would come out the hole in the back, you'd bring the wires out, and then you could buy amp electronically, you can use the crossover that comes with the kit, and do it that way, but it allows you to turn this into a high-end coax speaker if that's what you need. So it's a component that'll do coax mounting, and like I said, I, I didn't touch on it on the KS, but KS components, they do that exact same thing as well, so you can actually coax mount the KS components. Timmy here, he's gonna bring, oh, there you go. Thank you, sir. So here's one that's already built up. I'll actually, I'm gonna put it here on the thing so Timmy can zoom in on it. So that's the same speaker that we just looked at, but that has the tweeter mounted in there in the coax fashion. So when you buy the QS components or the KS components, you can do them as separates, or you can lock that tweeter down inside of there and you can turn it into a true high-end coax with full biamp capability, bywire capability, active or passive. You got the whole thing going on there. Now besides the cone that's in the mid-range, and I'm talking about this is the same on the six and a half or the six and three quarters, so I don't need to differentiate on size. This technology is in both of those. Uh, both have the same phase plug, both have the same ability to coax or to do separates. The other cool thing is the tweeter. And this is a one inch tweeter 
uh, or excuse me, this is a 30 millimeter tweeter. And this tweeter is a Teteron dome. It's not, it is kind of like a cloth dome type material, but it's Teteron, so it's very lightweight, very stiff. It's a very, very, very accurate sounding tweeter. And the cool part about it, and I'm gonna turn it sideways so Timmy can get, and I'll get my fingers out of the way. But this chamber right here, that's behind this tweeter, is actually an acoustically tuned chamber for the tweeter. So I know we're all familiar with subwoofers or mid-bass drivers, and we're all building boxes or building ported boxes so that you get the most performance out of your subwoofer. This is the exact same thing going on for this tweeter. It's actually in a tuned acoustical chamber. There's some polyfill in there as well to account for. It is truly a sealed chamber for this driver. And what's cool about this driver is you can do um, wonderful, wonderful things with this. Now, I told you it's a bigger tweeter, and we talked about your focal pattern, your dispersion pattern. So this is a bigger tweeter, so it's got a narrow dispersion pattern. But if you're doing your own install, that's not a problem because you're gonna be putting these tweeters wherever you want, whether it's integrated into an A-pillar, whether it's integrated down to a kick panel, wherever you may be doing this, you're just gonna know in mind. And in some cases, people want to have a little less output off axis because they want more direction directional activity to the tweeter. That's gonna be something perfect that you're gonna run into when you use these. So the tweeter on this is an ultra high-end tweeter, and because of that, and because it's bigger and it's in that tuned chamber, these actually use a crossover point that's down at 28 kilohertz or 2.8 K. Now, all these components we've talked about here, we talked about the CS, we talked about the KS, we talked about 4,500 or 4,000 or some of these are using 3,500 crossover points. And when you get over into the QS, this drops all the way down to 2,800. The cool part about that, and the reason that's so magical, is we as human beings are kind of tuned and wired to be really, really sensitive in the one to 3K area. And really that, that, that two to three and a half K range is kind of a critical range. And what's ironic about that, and the reason it's that way, is when babies cry, guess where their frequency's at? It's right in that range right there. So we're tuned as human beings, and even women more so, to be really sensitive to hearing sounds in that range. It's just part of our anatomy, it's part of our DNA, it's how we've been raised. So when you do crossover points, if you're gonna hear anomalies in a speaker system, you're gonna hear them where you're the most sensitive. And so the crossword point in most all drivers happens to be in that three to 3.5 K range. And everybody uses that range because a typical three quarter inch or half inch tweeter, that is a good place to cross that tweeter over. It lets it play as low as possible while still protecting the tweeter. And a good crossover designer will make sure he gets the job done so that it's smooth and blends pretty well there. But when you can shift the crossover point down away from that critical 3K range, it allows you to get an even smoother crossover point sound. It's gonna be less critical to pick up if you were to hear it, and you get more lower, lower tweeter slash upper mid-range out of the tweeter. So you're gonna get a broader response out of the tweeter. And that's what you're gonna experience when you move up into a QS component tweeter, is that tuned housing, that lower crossover point, the 24 dB proactive crossover that comes in the external crossover. This is truly a high-end component. We offer these in the six and a half and six and three quarter variety. Uh, 90 and 80, uh, or excuse me, 90 watts RMS, 180 peak is on the six and a half, and then 100 watts RMS and 200 peak is on the six and three quarter. And again, this situation, you would always use the six and three quarter unless you're dealing with a vehicle that has that odd undersized six and a half, and do yourself a favor, don't go to six and three quarter, grab the six and a half because it's gonna be easier to fit in there and less work for you to do it. And as far as pricing on those, let me pull that button on the sheet, and it's back here on another page. So we got QS match components, and it does uh, either one, doesn't matter which one you go with, they are 480 for the pair. And so that gets you everything that you see, the cast basket driver, the trilaminate cone, the rubber surround, uh, the phase plug, the external crossovers, the tweeter, the mounting hardware, everything that's included in that, and that gets you into the QS components. So hopefully, that covers, that's a lot of information, that's a lot of pricing, that's a lot of info to go over the complete kicker, basically full range speaker lineup. Yeah, they, they, they just held up a sign, remind me about the contest. I've been so busy trying to cram all this stuff into 90 minutes, I forgot about the contest, but I know Bill's been running at the bottom, so we know the contest is going on. But hopefully that gives you guys a good idea or a good glimpse into the full lineup of kicker, coaxial, and component speakers that we offer. Whether you're looking for something that's just a great upgrade to something that's factory and you need to replace the drivers and you want to get good efficient sound so that it keeps up with what you got and that limited power, all the way up to, okay, I want to do Q, I 
I want to go up to QS components, I want to use QS coaxials, and I'm looking to get that, that sound, that audio file type sound that I want in my car. You have any questions on these products, a couple things I want you to do. First off, uh, support at kicker.com. That's our guys. They're here Monday through Friday, uh, 8 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon, Central Standard Time. If you got questions before the sale, if you got questions while you're putting them in your car, if you got questions after the fact, those guys are there to answer all those questions. Uh, if you want to reach out, you can always reach out to social at kicker.com, and Bill will direct that question to the appropriate person if we need to to get that answered. But we are here to answer any question you've got on these products. Maybe you need to help figuring out what fits in your car, you need help figuring out what power amplifier you need, whatever it might be, reach out to us because we are here to answer those questions. Now, I do want to get the contest drawn. We're right at about 90 minutes. You know, that's kind of my motto. I want to keep it to 90 minutes. So I want to get the contest winners announced first. And then if we've got some questions, maybe uh, Jeremy back there can find a couple good questions that are in the feed and we'll answer those before we roll out for the evening. I know that was a lot of information and we took a lot of questions in the beginning, which is good. I love take questions. Sometimes I think maybe we need to have a show where it's just take every question and answer it because you guys ask a lot of great questions. So with that said, we do have some great prizes for tonight. The drawing tonight, and I really, uh, they hid it from me. I didn't know what it was. I was making up the drawings and they took it away from me and they said, here, this is what we're going to do for drawings. So, the drawing tonight, are you doing third place first, Bill? Yep. All right, so our third place winner tonight, you're going to get, you're going to get one of the, let me move out of the way here, you're going to get one of the gray Unmasked Live event t-shirts. So if you're our third place winner tonight, you're gonna get one of these t-shirts right here. You're also going to get a set of the EB300 in-ear Bluetooth earbuds. So you're gonna get a set of those along for the ride. And we're gonna throw you in a couple of the kicker koozies. I know you've seen them. If you haven't, they're on the website. We've done them on the show here, but the kicker koozie. So you'll be able to, you and one of your best friends can keep a couple beverages cold as you enjoy your kicker earbuds and they admire your kicker unmasked live shirt as you sit on your porch looking over your grand terrace. So that's our third place winner. Our second place winner, you're getting the exact same thing. Now I'm not gonna tell you what first place is getting yet. So Bill, if you will, let's get our third place winner drawn. Tell me who it is. Da -da -da. Winner is Matthew S. in Dover, Delaware. Matthew S. in Dover, Delaware. You are our third prize winner this evening. You're going to get that shirt, you're going to get those earbuds, and you're going to get a set of those koozies to enjoy your favorite beverage. Some things we need from you. We need you to send an email to social at kicker.com. We need you to give us your shirt size so that we've got that. We also need you to give us your mailing address and it cannot be a P.O. box. I stress this every time because even when we say it, sometimes people don't hear it, but we cannot ship to a P.O. box. It has to be a legit address other than P.O. box. And we do need your phone number, a number we can contact you at. Uh, FedEx or UPS, they all want phone numbers so that when it gets to your end and they're trying to deliver it, if there's any delays or problems or they can't find you, they can reach out to you to arrange delivery on that product. So if you will reach out to us, Matthew, US, that's social at kicker.com. Give us that info. You are our third place grand prize winner tonight. Thank you for tuning in, and you're going to enjoy those prizes, I know. Bill, who's our second place winner? Who gets the same thing? The royal treatment. Winner number two. This is going to be Tyler E. Tyler E. in Winston Salem, North Carolina. I love going to North Carolina. I go to the Outer Banks. I go down to Emerald Isle, and I go to vacation there at least every other year. I prefer to go every year, but I love the weather over there. I love the beach. So Tyler and Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where I like to go enjoy sand, surf, and fun. Again, for you, shirt, earbuds, koozies, heading your way. Same instructions as I did before. Please, social at kicker.com. Drop us an email. Shirt size, mailing address, no P.O. box, and give us your phone number so we can get that out to you. Now, tonight's show, obviously, we covered a wide range of kicker products that are available here as far as speakers, and we thought, what better prize would there be for tonight than for the winner of tonight's grand prize? And I'm looking through to make sure I've got this grand prize right. You're going to get a T-shirt, but not any T-shirt. You're going to get one of the limited edition, original, black kicker unmasked live tees that we did for the original show. That was back in around SEMA time in October. You're getting one of those. You're also going to get... And this is a cool part. You can get two pair of any CS or KS speakers, coaxials, or speakers components for your car. 
So what you can do, you can reach out to us here at socialkicker.com. Bill can get your information and forward it right over the text. We can tell you exactly what fits your car, and you're going to get to pick out any two pair. So you got a pair for the front and a pair for the back of CX, CS coaxles, CS components, KS coaxles or KS components. So that's what you're winning this evening. We think that is a fantastic prize. Thanks to Jeremy Wynn and Sandy for putting that together for us. That's a great prize package for you guys tuning in. So Bill, who is first place winner of that fantastic prize package tonight? And this is gonna be Eugene W. in Hudson, New Hampshire. Eugene, you are winner, winner, chicken dinner. You're getting that limited edition black shirt, and your choice of two pair of speakers to fit your ride so you can upgrade to some great kicker sound. If you will please reach out to social at kicker.com. We need your shirt size. We need a legit mailing address, no P.O. box. And we need your phone number. And if you could also include the year, make, and model of your car, we will put you in touch with the proper people over in customer support. We'll figure out which speakers are going to be the best choice for you. Maybe you have an amp. Maybe you just have a factory radio. We don't know what you have yet. But if you reach out and talk to our customer support, you can have that conversation. We'll put you in touch with them. We'll figure out exactly what two pair of speakers you need. And those will be packed up and shipped heading out your way. You are our grand prize winner for this evening. Bill, thank you very much. I know you work hard back there to get these winners drawn for the evening. And you do a lot of work. I sure appreciate it, Bill. And so I'll take a few questions. We'll take the, let them pull some out. The first one here is from Tony Bell. Tony Bell. Hey, I know Tony Bell. I know Tony. How you doing, Tony? QS series, can you use those on a marine or motorcycle application? Tony, the answer to that is a resounding yes. You can use those on a marine or motorcycle application. Uh, they're fairly weather resistant. Uh, the cone, the trilaminate cone, or the carbon poly blend cone, if you're looking at the coax, either one of those is going to be weather or water resistant for that. Um, I, I have heard myself personally. Uh, guys who have done fairings with the six and a half or six and three quarter, where they've done four six and a half and four tweeters. One of the loudest, good sounding bikes I've ever heard was utilizing that setup. Uh, and uh, it's, it's going to sound crazy because I'm going to just back it up. But Lake Havasu, our dealer over there, uh, two years ago, got to hear a boat and they used all QS components through the entire boat. And oh my lord, that boat sounded absolutely phenomenal. It was just clean and crisp and loud. And of course they backed it up. They had a pair of 15 inch ported cabinets built up underneath into the front of this boat. And so it just had all this rich base that would fill the boat. But those QS uh, components in that boat, I was completely blown, blown away. I'll honestly have to say, I've, I've done a lot of installs on boats over my career path. I've known a lot of guys who've done installs, and that boat in particular from our dealer at Lake Havasu is probably the best sounding uh, boat I've ever heard in my life, and it was using the QS component. So can you utilize them in those applications? Absolutely, you sure can. Another question, do we have a good one there? Brad Manning, why does the key 200.4 crossover both high pass and, or what, why, what, here, high pass and low pass at 3.2 in bi-amp mode. Well, it depends. In bi-amp mode, just so I can answer that correctly, it's going to cross between one of two crossover points in bi-amp mode, and it will figure out which one it needs. So if you've got the key 200.4 in bi-amp mode, and you happen to be using a component set that is a six and a half or six and three quarter or six by nine or six by eight mid base mid range and you have a real tweeter whether it's a half inch a three quarter or one inch if it's a legit tweeter the software will figure that out it knows that it's that and it will apply a 3.2 kilohertz crossover point 3.2 because 3.2 K is a very safe crossover point to use 24 dB per octave actively, whether you're using any size of those tweeters. 3.2 just works really well for that, and so it'll electronically set that crossover point. Now, if the key software determines that you're running something other than a tweeter, like for example, if you're running a middler, like that's on this system over here, the two and three quarter, or a lot of factory cars that have that up in the dash, that two and three quarter or three inch size up there, it knows it'll actually be able to determine that through the testing it does. It actually backs that biamp crossover point down to 640. So there's actually different crossover points that are there. It will choose between those two points based on if it determines it's a tweeter 
or determines it's I, I call them middlers. That's just my term for them. So hopefully you'll go with me on that. But the you know the two and three quarter inch style drivers or three inch style drivers I call them middlers because it's it's really a mid range that does play high frequency as well. So I call them middlers. That's my own coin term I guess. But it'll determine that and it'll choose between those two crossover points and that's designed and programmed into the key and then then it'll do all the equalization everything it needs to do around that to get the sound shape the way we want it to sound based on the stir the curve Steve Irby likes. So. Good question, good answer. We got another one there real quick. Bill, Wed, uh, what is Meyer maybe? Wiedenmeyer. What crossword points would you recommend on the pods with six and a half inch kits? So I'm gonna assume it says kids. We're six and a half inch kids, that's, that's some small kids. I don't know about you, but six and a half inch kids, I don't, I would probably recommend a lot of gentle handling and feeding them a lot of good protein and getting them out of that six and a half inch state. That would be my best advice for six and a half inch kids. Uh, other than that, the crossover point I'd recommend on the pods, if you're going to use, let's say, I'm assuming you're talking about the KSMT pod. This is going to be something, if you're going to use this, you could high pass this mid range, uh, it's a loaded question with an equally loaded answer. It depends on the crossover slope you're gonna use and the style of music you listen to uh, is gonna determine where I'm gonna tell you to high pass these at. I'm gonna tell you, you could go down probably as low as 400 hertz on this. If you're going 12 dB per octave, I think you could easily go 400 hertz at 12 dB. Uh, if you're doing 6 dB per octave, I would rake that back up to about 800 hertz at 6 dB per octave. Uh, and you could go higher if you wanted to. I mean, if you're someone who likes to get throttle that volume knob, you might find that these are gonna do a better job for your crossing over maybe, maybe that 1,000 or 1,200 point. Um, and, and if you're using 24 dB per octave crossovers, you could definitely play in that uh, 300 to 600 hertz range if you're using 24 dB per octave crossovers, because 24 dB gets that, gets that information below that crossover point out really quick. So the slope you're using, the volume level that you're gonna play it at, uh, the style of music, like if you're a heavy, if you're into heavy bass, heavy rap, whatever, I'm gonna tell you to choose the higher crossover point. Go to about 800 hertz on this. If you're more into classic rock, uh, you know, more stuff that isn't, does, isn't having extreme bass content, yeah, 400 hertz all day long. And then as far as your six and a half driver that's gonna be down the door, it's gonna depend. Um, you don't necessarily have to or want to or need to cross it over at the same point as here. You may find that you need to do a little bit of gapping. You also may find you need to do a little bit of overlapping. That's gonna really depend on what the frequency response of your six and a half is, how high it can play, uh, how much you want. Ideally, I would probably say down in that door, realistically, uh, if, and I'm just shooting you from the cuff. I mean, if I was sitting in your car with you, we had an electronic cross over there and we're starting to play that game and we've got these set up on there, I'm probably gonna cross those doors uh, somewhere between 125 and probably absolutely no higher than 250 is probably gonna be where I would just off the cuff tell you I'm gonna start. And then I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna determine. I, I wanna get a good blend between that six and a half and that driver here, but at the same time, I don't want so much high frequency coming out of that six and a half that it pulls my ear down to the floor. I want my ear to be pulled up to the pod. So the slope you're using will have a big depend on that. The frequency response of the driver, where it may be peaky or what it's off axis response in is gonna depend on that. So ideally the real answer is tools, i.e. your ear or an RTA and in the car and playing. But off the cuff, you just say, where am I gonna start? I'm gonna tell you start at that low passing that driver, uh, 125 to 250 range is probably where I'm gonna be. I've seen a lot of times people go as high as 275. Um, but that's the range I'm gonna tell you to start with and work with. And then of course, I've already covered that on that driver. So there, that gives, the great part about all this is it's fun to play. You can figure things out and have some fun. So there's that. We are up to the point, it's 9.15. I will take one more question. If Jeremy's got a quick one he can throw on here. This is oh, Baseaholic Productions, here we go. This would be Drew. Drew, how you doing this evening, sir? How well would the pods match with a QS 6.75 mid-range running full three-way active with IQ amps. Okay, Drew, or Baseholic Productions if you prefer, here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you're going to run a QS component, so you're looking at running the tweeter and the mid that's over here in a QS component set, I don't know that I would tell you to run the pod. Um, I'm not telling you you couldn't, uh, but if you're gonna go with this pod, you're, I would probably, you're gonna delete the tweeter out of that kit because I don't think you're gonna wanna run that tweeter and this tweeter at the same time. So you'd probably be deleting that tweeter and running this pod with just the six and a half inch mid. What I would probably more recommend you do is if you've got the QS tweeter and the mid range, mid bass, I would get the KS 
driver, that KS270, and I would incorporate that into doing a true three-way setup. Then where you would have would be your six and a half, you'd have that 2.7, and then you'd have that tweeter along for the ride. Uh, that, in my opinion, would be the better way to go in that setup. Uh, I hate to talk you out of the pods, but I think in that situation, if you're gonna do that and you're gonna do the pods, you're set on these, you're probably gonna delete the tweeter. Uh, and I only say that from a sound qualitative standpoint. Now, if you're just looking to get more high end, maybe you're trying to overcome road noise, you've got a convertible or a Jeep or something where you've got a lot of noise you're trying to overcome, then I can see where maybe you want to just go ahead and keep that tweeter and add this to it, which you could do. But I'm kind of looking at, in a lot of cases, uh, less is more. And that's where I'm saying if you've already got the QS, but you want to go to a full three-way system, uh, I would really throw in that KS 2.7. That KS, I know it's a KS driver, but the way that driver sounds, it fits in the QS line. It's worthy of being coupled with QS mids and QS tweets. So hopefully that answers your question. Hopefully that gives you a good direction to start with and play. And I know you know half the fun of this is diving in and having some fun. So if you have any other questions, you know how to reach out, Drew. Just let me know and we'll go from there. So with that said, folks, I sure appreciate you hanging in for tonight's show. Ran a little bit long, but we had a lot of information to cover. Thanks for hanging in there. Hope you got some good info out of it. Hope you had a good time. Hope you enjoyed seeing some people win some great prizes here tonight. It's kind of have we gotten in tune. We have fun doing it. For everyone here in the studio, that includes my man Tim Smith behind the cameras. He does a great job hopping between three cameras and keeping my water away from me, so we got to give him props for that. Ernie for giving me complete sabotage, so now I'm ready to drink a pitcher of water, not just a little bottle of it. Jeremy Wynn back there doing a real good job working with Bill to capture the winners, get you guys and get questions up on the screen. All of us are lucky to be the representatives for Stillwater Designs Kicker. Thank you for joining us tonight. It was a fantastic show. Next week, I'll be stepping off the controls here, but Mr. John Myers will be in my place. He's got some great information to talk about on RTAs, kind of tools of the trade. I've got some personal things going on. I unfortunately won't be here, but I will be back the Tuesday after that. So everyone, have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week. Kicker Unmasked Live, 7.30 Central Time, right here on Kicker Facebook and YouTube. Thanks, folks. Had a great time. Oh, <laughs>